is the Exxon Southwest Conference Game of the Week. Brought to you by Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. And brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. By Nations Bank. By La Quinta Motor Inns. By Ford. By Win Dixie. And by Dr. Pepper. Kyle Field on the campus of Texas A&M University, where today, for the first time since 1958. The Missouri Tigers visit the Aggies of 16th rated Texas A&M. Welcome to College Station, Dave Barnett, along with former Houston Oilers quarterback Giff Nielsen. And we find out something that the Aggies have not had to delve into and just as soon would not ever have to delve into again this week, and that is how they come after a regular season loss into the next game. You know, the expectations, Dave, have been so high here in College Station from people around the country, but if you talk to people inside the athletic department here at Texas A&M, they did not ever really believe that they were the fifth-ranked team in the country. And so what they have to do now is they have to come back and regroup and show what kind of football football team they have and that takes character R.C. Slocum says this team has it we will find out and it begins with their quarterback they think Corey Pulling is a much better quarterback than he showed against Oklahoma last week nothing physically that they're working on but mentally it's a different story well Corey Pulling has always had things go his way in his entire career played last year not a whole lot of pressure but now the burden is on his shoulders he is struggling but every quarterback goes through it I think Corey Pulling will come out of this and be okay and lead this uh, team to to more victory and, and continue the success that they've had here at Texas A&M. Just the fourth meeting ever between these two schools in football. Texas A&M favored. We'll be back in College Station in a moment. This is the office where our Ford truck engineers get a lot of work done. Because by knowing firsthand how a full-size pickup ought to work, they can make it work even better. That's why the Ford F-Series now has a new standard airbag, standard anti-lock brakes, and constant ideas to make tough even tougher. More proof that at Ford we're looking ahead and looking to stay ahead. Ford F-Series, the number one selling truck, is built Ford Tough. For 28 years, the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics has been the professional and educational association for over 4,100 individuals at 1,500 institutions. The NACTA Foundation provides internships and annually awards to half a million dollars in postgraduate scholarships. Join us in celebrating the centennial of our profession. We're NACTA, the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics. For quick response. For smooth acceleration, turning loose. For a cleaner engine, turning loose. Move up to 93 Octane Exxon Supreme and turn the Tiger loose. Fifty to fifty-five thousand expected at Kyle Field today from Missouri and Texas A&M. Bob Stoll in his fifth year as head coach of the Missouri Tigers, and we look at our Southwest Airlines game plan for Mizzou. One of the things that Bob Stoll wants to do is he wants to get physical. He knows he's in for a battle with this uh, Texas A&M uh, defense and offense. He wants to get physical. The handyman can. Of course, he's talking about uh, Jeff Handy, the fine quarterback. He wants him to continue to play well, and he wants to bench the 12th man. That's something you have to deal with when you come to College Station. These fans are absolutely phenomenal for this team as you take a look at them as they prepare for the game. R.C. Slocum also in his fifth year with the Aggies in the fine 40-11 and one mark here and their game plan. Yeah, he wants to deck Holly. We're talking about Kenny Holly, not Christmas in this situation. And keep pulling for Corey. Everybody wants Corey Pulling to pull through his little uh, problems right now. And don't mess with Texas. We're talking about A&M. you got to have that attitude, and that's important. 
That's today's Southwest Airlines game plan. We return to Kyle Field with the opening kickoff after these messages. It's where the careers of naval officers are launched and where pleasure boaters come to cast away from it all. But Annapolis, Maryland is also a major financial center because it's served by Nations Bank, which enables coastal properties to call on a depth of experience in financing. Offers the overstreets everything from equity loans to mutual funds and gives people a bank that puts greater financial power at their command. In Annapolis and in 1,900 other communities throughout our nation. Hello again, everybody. I'm Steve Smith. On our Sunday morning program, several political fixtures reconsider their futures in light of a bad case of the term limit blues. She's raised millions for charity. Now she tells how she does it and why. Carolyn Farr drops by. Houston's grandest home reopens after a two-year facelift, an early tour of BioBend. Also, change in East Texas and a visit to Willie's World. Sunday morning at 9.30 on Steve Smith Sunday. College Station and Kyle Pooler, who does both the kicking and punting for Missouri, is ready to get us underway. He'll kick with a fairly strong win behind him. Leland McElroy and Wilbert Biggins are deep for Texas A&M. with that strong breeze only to the three fumbled and it'll be returned from the three yard line by McElroy who fights all the way out across the 20. Not a bad return. He gets 18 yards. Javon Lenhart makes the stop and a really really interesting situation this week for Corey Pulley. Can he come back to the level that he showed as a true freshman last year? Can he shake off the self-imposed pressure that R.C. Slocum says he is taking on himself these days? The nation's bank starting offense for the Aggies. Rodney Thomas is the third rated runner in the nation this week, and Chris Dowson leads the offensive line at center. Thomas breaks out in motion, and the give is to the fullback Cliff Gross on first down. He'll fight for about five or six into the heart of the Missouri defense. And the Tiger defense looks this way. Up front, they're led by Mark Pedrotti, outstanding junior defensive end from Shawnee Mission, Kansas. Dietrich Wells plays what they call the whip position, kind of a hybrid linebacker and safety. Jerome Madison is the rover, and he makes the secondary go. And Madison, a big key in their win over Illinois last week. Gain of six for Gross, and Pullen stumbles as he rolls and completes his first pass of the day. Catch is made on the right side by Ryan Matthews. And he should have the first Aggie first down. Matthews from Houston Lamar, his fifth catch of the year. Junior two-year letterman. That's exactly what you want out of your quarterback, Pollock, who is struggling. You want to be able to get that first pass completed. And he put a nice pass on Matthews there. Bullock perhaps changing the play on first and ten, both wideouts to the left and it's play action. And to the short side of the field, not a whole lot of room, and Bullock on his roll may lose a yard or so. Padrotti chases him out of bounds, and the Aggies look at second and long. Bob Toledo was telling us, the offensive coordinator, that last week against Oklahoma, Corey Pollock changed the plays at the line of scrimmage maybe a little bit more than he should have, trying to get something a little bit more than was there. And he's trying to simplify the game plan this week to help his young quarterback. Our first look at the Dr. Pepper roundup. All day for Pollock, now chased, and will again keep this time for short yardage. Runs right into the linebacker, Travis McDonald. Their leading tackler a year ago. He's a cousin of former Arkansas Razorback Gary Anderson, junior from Columbia, Missouri. 
and bring up third and eight. Pollock that time was looking for a little slip screen on the left side. Missouri did a nice job staying back and recognizing that offensive set. Consequently, Pollock had to take the ball himself. Got popped pretty good on about uh, the 36. And as you saw, AM has not been a solid third down conversion team yet this year. Again, tremendous protection for Pollock, and he's fired complete over the middle to Tony Harrison. 15 yards, first trip into Missouri territory at the 48. Boy, I really liked what I saw there with Polig as he sat back in the pocket, watched the secondary drop, and you can see the receiver coming into the middle. Harrison right in the proper zone. Watch this, and Polig is throwing into the wind right here. You can see the strength of his arm. Steps up and lets it fly, and that is just exactly how you're supposed to do it. So Polig on the early returns looking very solid rodney thomas's first pitcher between the tackles good for about six or seven and the rover jerome madison there for the stop on thomas averaging better than 153 yards per game number three in the ncaa ratings after two outings six and a half yards for terry already three touchdowns watch collins number 54 as he puts a hit on major there and this is the kind of attack but Bob Stoll is hoping he doesn't see against his Missouri title. But he expected it. Thomas tripped as he nears the 30, but another Aggie first down. Yeah, what Stoll said this week is, if I'm a and I try and cram it right down our Missouri's throats based on their problems passing last week. And if you got a back like Thomas, you can do it. Outstanding leg drive as he came around the right side that time. A lot of people have to be in on a tackle to bring Rodney Thomas down. That's the power of this AM running game. Maggie's with the opening kickoff on a steady march inside Tiger territory. Another audible for Pullet. This is something they've tried to simplify for him. And he is three for three. Harrison has first and goal. On this drive, Pollock for 15 to Harrison and now 25 to Tony Harrison. Watch Pollock step up in the pocket. He's waiting for Harrison to come loose and he really gets popped as soon as he throws it. But Harrison is out there by himself, one-on-one -on -one with Kevin McIntosh. Pollock waited for him and hit him. High formation on first and goal. Thomas is inside the five. Off left tackle behind Dexter Wesley and Tyler Harrison. And Pedrotti on the stop for second and goal. Now here comes the power attack by the Aggies. They'll bring a couple of tight ends in. But boy, you gotta like the way Polig is leading this AM offense in light of what has happened the first couple of weeks of the season. He came in at 52%. He had already thrown as many interceptions as he did all of last year. Five, three of them last week. But he's a different man based on this drive. Play action. And a look to the wide open end zone. Tight end James McKeon has the touchdown. so much for the quarterback controversy in College Station. Well, Bob Toledo, the <laughs> offensive coordinator, made some great calls. Corey Pollock directed the offense, and the Aggies look like they're going up seven to nothing. Third career score for McKeon, junior tight end from Willis and Terry Benetulius. Boys added the extra point. Great call by Toledo as he comes up. Watch the play action fake. He's looking for his big fullback who's clearing. And then McKeon slips behind the fullback all by himself. Gross cleared it out. McKeon scores the touchdown. Early in College Station, the returns are excellent for the Aggies. Don't mind football if I'm not playing. Don't mind a tackle, ain't my bones paying. 
Don't fill me up with expectations I got what I want, no invitations Just give me what the doctor ordered Just what the doctor ordered Just give me a Dr. Pepper Don't pay it. Are you paying the regular retail price at your supermarket? Stop it. Every day, Winn-Dixie discounts the regular retail price. On chips and snacks, 10% off. Magazines and books, 10% off. Patios, 20% off. School supplies, 20% off. Hair care products, 25% off. Cosmetics, 30% off. Greeting cards, 40% off. Gift wrap and bows, 50% off. Every day at Winn-Dixie, your low price leader. This has always been a very comfortable place to be. Just ask the owners who ranked Ford Crown Victoria among the top 10 models in J.D. Power & Associates initial quality study. Now with a special price reduction of over $3,300, Crown Victoria is more affordable than ever. Which should make Crown Victoria more comfortable than ever. at Kyle Field where the Aggies have taken a 7 to nothing lead over Missouri. Corey Pollock said, I want to have fun playing football. That was a fun drive. And the kick into the wind is very short by Benetulius, returned by Rosette New Jenkins out to the 22. And the kick coverage unit always a strength here at A&M. Larry Walker the second making the tackle we see maybe the best quarterback in the big eight this year jeff handy junior from blue springs missouri who set a big eight sophomore record last year and he only started six times 2463 yards nation bank starters kenny holly an outstanding wide receiver one of the best they've ever had there and mike Badoski, they think should be first team all american this year right to the ground on first down of the big 270 that's 2-7-0 pound fullback Michael Washington is hit by Junior White. And the Aggie Nations Bank defensive starters Chatham for the injured Sam Adams, Wallace for the injured Eric England, but they will play. Soleri has been very banged up this year. They think he'll follow in the Quentin Coriot tradition at outside backer. Aaron Glenn, they think an All-American senior year is in store for him at quarterback. And another first and 10 for Missouri. Out of the eye. And Joe Freeman, the junior tailback from Richardson, Texas, brought down by Reggie Graham, 38, getting an inside linebacker start for the injured Larry Jackson in Texas Tech, trailing early at Athens, Georgia. Lots of Texans on this Missouri roster. 18 total. They have nine Texans on their offensive TV chart. One at each offensive line spot except for right guard, and four of the top six running backs are from Texas. Bob Stoll, former coach at UTEP. Handy to the air for the first time, finds Kenny Holly, and another Missouri first down to the 47. Take a look at their big offensive lineman. They love this guy, an Outland Trophy candidate. There you can see Holly gathering in that pass, but watch Badoski. He's working inside right now on Chatham, and he does a nice job keeping players out of the face of Jeff Handy, and that is crucial for a quarterback, crucial in this Missouri offense where they like to throw the ball so much. Inside give, and Washington has a huge hole. He is carried twice, and he has picked up 10 or more yards twice. And brought down again by Junior White, the free safety. That's a big rushing day by Missouri standards. They have been one of the poorer running teams in the country lately. We're talking about a refrigerator Perry's type running back here. Watch as he goes right up the middle. I don't think it's going to be too long before you're going to see Sam Adams and Eric England into the game. Both of them have had injury problems. They have practiced this week, late in the week. I just think they're a better team with those two players on the field. Andy with the audible hangs it up. And it is incomplete. The intended receiver, Brian Salee. He's a junior from Jackson, Tennessee, covered well by Ray Mickens. They can do a lot of things with Brian Salee. He is a backup quarterback. You might see them whip one out to the sidelines and see Salee drop back and throw a pass. 
That time he was working on Ray Mickens, and if uh, you had a chance to watch the Texas A&M-Oklahoma game last week, you saw that Mickens went out with an injury. He practiced this week. He had a concussion. He is back, and he is a good one. So second and ten. Three wideouts. Short drop. Handy over the middle has Mike Jadlow, who should have another Tiger first down. 11 yards, Mickens on the tackle. Jadlow and Salee both get a lot of work along with Holly at the three wideout spots. He's a senior from Capel, Texas. The composure of Handy is crucial for this Missouri football team. We had a chance that time to see him drop back, look to the right, and then come back to the left. He's a very patient quarterback. You have to put pressure on him or he'll pick you apart. Washington stacked up this time, maybe a gain of a yard. And they had to gang tackle him. 58 in the middle of the picture is Lance Teichelman, the nose guard. He'll have to have some help to bring down a 270-pound fullback. No question about that. It is a gang tackling defense, but that's what the Aggies are known for. With a fullback as big as Washington, you're going to have to get a bunch of hats on him. Play action roll for Handy. Complete. Freeman circles out of the backfield. And the Tigers have reached the Aggies 17. 14 yards to Joe Freeman. Well, that time Handy got outside. It was a simple little uh, fake handoff to the left. He came out right on a bootleg, and there was Freeman coming across the field. An easy throw for Handy. Another first down for Missouri. Both offenses dominating this game so far. Aggies defensive coordinator Bob Davies says this team probably had the best game plan that we saw last year. Outstanding at keeping the linebackers off balance for AM. Freeman is inside the 15. They have gone right at what is normally the Aggies' defensive strength, and they tend to neutralize it with the game plan, which features a, a lot of play action, a lot of screens, draws, trick plays, everything they have, they'll throw at them today. Now, you talk about why this Aggie team may not be the fifth-rated team in the country like a lot of people thought they would be. It's because of the big play linebacker. The Aggies have always had that big play linebacker that would come up and cause some kind of a turnover in a situation like this. They just haven't gotten that this year. Blitz is on, handy, way behind Washington, but that time the linebackers asserted themselves. And Sam Adams also with a push as he is checked in at left defensive end. Yeah, watch Atkinson come in. Aggies are not sitting back this time. They're coming on a blitz, and watch Atkinson come right up over the middle. Great feet as he jumps over the back, and it's Sam Adams and Atkinson putting pressure on handy, and that's how you stop the passing game. Watch this one more time from the end zone. There's Adams and there's Atkinson. So third and eight, Missouri trailing 7-0 on their first march of the afternoon from the Aggie 15. And they back up one. They were ready for Holly on his little slant, so Larry nailed him there, and they'll have to kick for three. Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M, was concerned about those little slip screens where they have a receiver on the outside. They bring him right underneath and have him follow the offensive line down the field. Well, Solari was perfectly positioned for that play. Now Missouri trying for three points. Ruler, as we said, has all the kicking and punting. This is just his second attempt of the year. Good last week for 38. This one will be 33. With the win behind him, he missed it, and the Aggies still lead 7-0. We are midway first quarter at College Station. Imagine the smooth acceleration, the quick response, the high performance. 93 octane Exxon Supreme gasoline. Move up to Exxon Supreme and turn the tiger loose. Frequent flyers on most airlines are thousands of miles from a free trip. 
But on Southwest Airlines, our company club frequent flyer members are only eight short round trips away. Southwest Airlines Company Club, the shortest route to free trips. Southwest Airlines has so many flights, if you miss one, you can always catch the next one. Or the next one. Or the next one. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. So you're on the road a lot. Put in some long hours. Hey, I know how tough that can be. We really do earn our money, don't we? Okay, now where to stay? You consider La Quinta? They treat you good and the price is right. You care about money or do you just want to throw it away? La Quinta. You're not staying at a hotel. You're staying with us. A 33-yarder easier than it would have been last year because they've, as you're probably aware, moved in the hash marks this year, but it didn't help Kyle Pooler. And uh, a really impressive opening drive by Missouri comes up empty, and a and takes over through 21st and 10. New backfield with Leland McElroy at the tailback. This is Cliff Gross. The junior fullback from here in College Station, A&M Consolidated High School. Alabama continues to load it up on Arkansas. Georgia now 14-0 over the Red Raiders. And Gross out. His backup, Detron Smith, the sophomore from Lake Highlands in Dallas, checks in. Even without Greg Hill, who again serves out his suspension today, there is plenty of backfield depth for the Aggies. Bullitt has a first down to Greg Short, the fine tight end, 21 yards. Get the heaven from close to sacking Bullitt, and he's standing back there and picking him apart. I really like his patience in the pocket. He is allowing the offensive receivers to develop their routes. That time, Short just went back. Watch him sit there, sit there, and then he stands and fires. Nobody has ever questioned the strength of his arm. He has got a gun, a very quick release. It's just the patience in the pocket, having fun in the passing game. I would imagine he's having a blast right now. Well, five for five, you can't get any more enjoyable than that for 74 yards. McElroy, what an exciting runner. If Hill were here, he would be third team, and he could start for most Division I schools in America. Here is the power of the Aggie running game, and of course it starts with the offensive line. Watch Calvin Collins. Takes out a couple right there after getting just a little bit of help uh, uh, from one of his teammates, but that's where it all starts. Watch this. And then the cutback. Here is what you have with Texas A&M. You've got that depth in the running back position. There's some talent there. All seniors up front except for Collins, who's a redshirt freshman. Leaping over the line for a couple, McElroy. McDonald on the tackle for Missouri. You talk about McDonald, you talk about Major inside. Those are the kind of linebackers for Missouri that make the big plays. Major is a load, and so is McDonald. 6'2", 220, and they both can run the heart and soul of this Missouri defense. On that opening drive, they didn't have any of these tough third downs to convert. This is a long two they need here. Bullock again all day, and floats it complete again for the first down to Short. Coverage by Daryl Major, and Bullock is still perfect at six for six. It looked like a version of the 46 defense by Missouri. They'll jump into this, of course, made famous by Buddy Ryan. But watch Shorp. He's man-on-man -man with Major. Goes to the outside. The ball is just a little bit thrown behind him, but excellent concentration. Your tight end becomes valuable when you're a struggling quarterback. Well, three of his completions are to tight ends out of his 66 strike. Look for the pass here for McElroy. Showed it, now keeps it. And he is hog-collared by Major. Aggies wanted a face mask, and they may get it. Major is the strongest linebacker in Missouri football history. Junior from St. Louis. Watch how intense he is as he comes all the way across the field. He knows it's a, a sweep on the outside. It looks like he gets popped right there. And then watch him run. 
this guy can absolutely fly because McElroy can fly. And it looked like he may have got a face mask there. The official standing there said maybe he just got his shoulder pad. No penalty. Very impressive numbers for Corey Pillar. What looked like a big play, major limits to a six-yard gain, and it's second and four. They get her to Smith, who was turned back. And the Aggies again will have a third and short. That's George Hunt, a big defensive tackle. 6-3-2-88 from New Madrid, Missouri. Now let's take a look at how Missouri plays this third and short situation. Last time they brought eight guys up on the line of scrimmage, played man coverage, and Corey Pollard went right to who he was supposed to, his big tight end, lean on the linebacker, break to the outside. Says maybe I want to talk this over just a little bit. Time out for the Aggies. Three minutes and 29 seconds in the first quarter from Kyle Field, where Corey Pullett has been the story early, and it is 7 to nothing, Aggies. With its cool new look and refreshing new lines, the new Ford Ranger Splash is the first and only compact flare side. The 1993 Ford Ranger Splash. Start making some waves. be great if your neighbor was Wally Dallenbach, the Keystone Beer Winston Cup driver? Wally, great car. Want to take it for a spin, Dave? A spin? And keep her under 170, Dave. 170? <laughs> See Wally Dallenbach, or possibly his neighbor Dave, race the Keystone Beer stock car in the Winston Cup Series. Well, how'd you drive, Dave? Well, she drifts a little in three. No problem. But we need to bleed the brakes. It's Wouldn't a that be there. great? Why Farm Bureau Insurance? They look at your total insurance needs. And develop what's best for you. When you have a claim, Farm Bureau works hard to get you back on the road, fast. If health problems interrupt your income, they can help keep you going. Helping you is what we do best. That's why people across America, from every walk of life, depend on Farm Bureau Insurance. Americans like you. For auto, home, and life, call your local Farm Bureau today. Well, what a start, and they'll look at third down, and again, two needed on the second offensive possession of the day. I really like Corey Pollock's decision right there. He wasn't sure what he wanted to run. Maybe in the past, he would have gone up to the line of scrimmage and tried to make something out of nothing. He was totally unclear, so he says, I'm going to call timeout and reload. Let's we'll see what happens. Well, what happens is that freshman right guard Calvin Collins moves and uh, the Aggies will march back five. And we're pleased to welcome those of you joining us today on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks, Dave Barnett and Giff Nielsen from College Station, Texas, with seven to nothing. Ball start, offense, repeat, still third down. And our referee today is Lloyd Dale from the Southwest Conference. It's a split. Southwest Big 8 officiating crew, four from the Southwest and three officials from the Big 8. And now third and seven. Okay, Missouri right now has eight guys up close to the line of scrimmage. They've got a pressing defense on the outside. Let's see if Pollard works his tight end. Got it off just in time, but his first incompletion of the day floated over the middle in the general area of McKeon, and the big push came up the middle from Travis McDonald, the blitzing linebacker. There are more people rushing in that situation than you've got blockers, and Polig recognized that. I'm not sure if the receivers did. There was not anybody in center field. No free safety, so if you ever get in that position, you've got to go to a blitz control type of a route. Ollie, very dangerous return, man, but he won't get to return this one. Very poor kick off the side of James Bennett's foot out at the 26-yard line. 13 yards for the walk-on junior from Austin. Well, R.C. Slocum all week long has been answering questions about Corey Pullig and will he live up to his billing? 
I think he's a bright young quarterback prospect. I recognize uh, his youth and inexperience. And uh, we sat down and talked about that. I asked him if his girlfriend had quit him or if he's having some kind of personal problems. Uh, he assured me that he was not. And uh, I think it's just a case of a young guy trying to do too much and uh, us as coaches maybe asking too much of him. Into double coverage and intended for Holly incomplete. I would imagine the way he's completing passes, he could probably have a few extra dates after the game <laughs> today. But what do you think? <laughs> In fact, he said uh, his girlfriend and his family this week said the same thing that his coaches said. They said, you don't look like you're having any fun out there. you got the weight of the world on your shoulders. Boy, everybody wants to give you advice when you miss a couple of passes. Believe me. Freeman, no gain, Eric England. Bothered by a broken finger, a bruised calf, and a heart problem. Kind of a mystery uh, last week is pulse at Norman was uh, measured at as high as 250 beats per minute. They tested him. They don't think it's any kind of uh, lasting problem. Preseason All-American who did not start today but uh, expected to play quite a bit. And the loss of two to bring up third and 12. Blitz and Handy is down under Reggie Graham. And the Aggie defense looks much more like itself on this second Tiger series. Well, Reggie Graham timed this absolutely perfect. A young player out of Clear Creek in League City in the Houston area. Absolutely perfect timing, and that's what you're looking for with this Aggie defense. From his 10-yard line, good high wobbly spiral by Kyle Pooler, Aaron Glenn. kick 42 on the return 43 on the return just absolutely perfect blocking and this is one great athlete watch Aaron Glenn he doesn't have anybody next to him he, he gets by one tackle there one tackle there and then watch he just sets it up and he's off to the races Missouri is not taking the 12th man out of this game Aggies take over Thomas there it is, he could score, he does. <laughs> 26 yards on Rodney Thomas's fourth rushing touchdown of 1993. Bennett Julius out of the hold of Stormy Case to make it 14 nothing. One forty-four still to go first quarter. The key block thrown by a backup receiver 17 Gene Lowry for mm -hmm. Thomas. Watch this hole. Boy, that is just absolutely beautiful as Gross kicked out the linebacker and then Thomas was off to the races. Shows you the value of a receiver blocking against the defensive back. That allowed Thomas to get into the end zone one more time. Good push all the way through the offensive line. Good seal on the tackle, the guard positions, the kick out by Gross, and watch the block downfield. Absolutely beautiful football right there. And this first quarter has been everything that an Aggie fan could hope for. 55,000 strong at Kyle Field. And the value a gift of fresh legs at tailback. Yeah, Thomas had a chance to sit that last series and McElroy came in. And some lively legs 
on that 26-yard sprint. R.C. Slocum was very animated, maybe more animated than I've ever seen him with his team after the walkthrough yesterday. He was talking about having fun and making big plays. It's that Aggie attitude that he wants back that has made them so good here in College Station. So good since R.C. Slocum has taken over. It's basically don't mess with Texas. And then, Vanitulia. This is Clayton Baker, true freshman from Denison, Texas, is spilled and hurdles to the 24, return of 16 yards. Wilbert Biggins there for the hit for the Aggies return coverage unit. Well, the 12th man this week here in College Station is Scott Wells, 5'9", 140-pound junior out of Sugarland Clements High School. And watch this. This is what it's all about. A chance to go down and hit somebody. Oh, yeah, that's fun. He'll be talking about that for the rest of his life right there. Yeah, give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets to tell all his buddies about it. First and 10 for the Tigers, their own 23-yard line. Andy great play action and a wide open Salim takes it to the Aggie 44. Junior White finally catching up with what keyed the whole play was a tremendously carried out fake by Jeff Handy. Well here is where Handy is really valuable to his team and here is where he really needs to step up and bring this team back. 14 to nothing, yeah, they're down. He stands in the pocket and finds Salih coming across the middle after a beautiful fake in the backfield. Andy, a new backfield behind him, Antoine Johnson and Ryan Lyons are the setbacks. Hangs this one up for Salih in single coverage and behind him incomplete. Mickens was right there with him. A lot of eyes on Ray Mickens this year. He replaces their three-year starter, Derek Frazier. Andy has tried that twice and come up empty twice, second and ten. You know, Texas A&M can come after the quarterback in a blitzing situation because they've got those good corners. Mickens is an outstanding cover guy. Aaron is a great cover guy on the other side. We saw what kind of an athlete Glenn was on that punt return. Andy play action again. And caught again. This is Jadlow. Who fumbles and the Aggies have it at their 33 yard line. Big break for a and That looked to be a big gainer, and Bob Stoll has seen his offense move the ball with nothing to show for. One more time, watch the speed and quickness. Here comes Aaron Glenn. He's going for the football. He pops that football out of Jade Lowe's hands, and then he got some help. Reggie Graham was there saying thank you very, very, and very much. <laughs> and on the fumble that Glenn caused, it looked as if Sam Adams will be credited with the Aggie recovery. There's still 58 seconds to go in the first quarter they take over. Fuller brought down from behind by the blitzing rover Jerome Madison, who was a tailback two years ago, a free safety last year, and they move him again to the rover spot this year. They play a whip and a rover. It sounds like something the SPCA would want to follow. <laughs> but they are, they're, they're sort of half linebacker, half strong safety type play. Well, it gives him an opportunity to do a bunch of different things. It has, it gives him a chance to jump in that 46 defense and, and keep eight guys up close to the line of scrimmage. Swing pass caught by Rodney Thomas. Out of one tackle. And finally knocked out with 13 seconds left at his 39 by Kevin McIntosh. And the whip, Dietrich Wells. Fifth catch by Thomas, improved receiver out of the backfield. And a and will look at third and five on what may be the last play of the first quarter. That really was not an easy catch to make either. It was kind of hard, it was kind of high, but with very soft hands, Thomas was able to pull it in. with play action under pressure almost at a 
intercepted by McDonald. Not quite as much on that toss as uh, the previous efforts by Bullitt. The intended receiver was Ryan Matthews. And so Bennett off that miserable effort on his first punt. With eight seconds to go in the quarter, we'll kick one more time into the wind to Kenny Holler. All right, here is a dangerous receiver as he is getting ready to, to take this punt. You can see some scores right there. Holly can do the same thing that Aaron Bowen just did. Much better this time. Holly from the 17. And a return of about 12 yards, a kick of 44 yards and we are through one quarter in Kyle Field 14 nothing in it you know all my life I've worked with the best so when I needed a new truck I just naturally went to Mack Hike Ford I met all the folks at Mack Hike Ford the body shop the park department and the service drive they got the best Ford team in Texas and when they explained their price protection guarantee, heck, I knew I was going to get the best price, too. You don't have to be Bum Phillips to get the best of Mack High Ford. You just have to tell them Bum sent you. It's back! And it's as big as a house! It is a house. It's the Maya Chronicle win a house game. Well, that explains it. I'd never seen a monster with windows before. You can win a $125,000 house in your choice of five Friendswood communities. Sir, you can also win prizes from Dillard's every week. And $5,000 cash weekly. So that's what that green stuff is. Oh my goodness, it's as big as a house. No, Mama, bigger. <laughs> What's her problem? She forgot to enter. Well, how did they win 22 straight in the regular season? R.C. Slocum says that it comes down to character. And he says character allows you to bounce back when something goes wrong, as it did last week. And that opening drive showed a lot of character individually by Corey Pulig and collectively by the Aggie offense. They may look eventually back at this season in retrospect, and, and that drive may be as important a drive as they'll have all year. The Tigers on the give to Ryan Lyons for short yardage. Junior from Arlington Lamar, another one of the Texas products in the backfield. Antonio Shorter and Jason Atkinson on the hit. Well, they got a lot of Texas products on this Texas A&M football team. I think they've only got one guy from out of state. In fact, if you're out of state and you want to play for the Aggies, it's kind of like robbing a bank. It's very difficult to get in. And then when you get in, you can't find the combination. with a gain of one, and Handy, whoops, that's, that's a, fumble. a fumble, that's a live ball, and it is out of bounds. Luckily for the Tigers, Frank Jones intended target, and Ray Mickens almost got there before it went out of bounds. And Handy did something that we're told he almost never does, made a bad decision that time. It really did, it looked like he tripped over his offensive line as he came out, and then he just kind of hurls it out there. He didn't throw it, he just kind of pushes it out there. Mickens going after the football he realizes the ball is going backwards just about recovers it that would have been tragic look as if uh, maybe the idea was for Jones to catch it and throw one but so much for the good idea third and 16 under pressure 
and he gets away. Chatham chases him, so Larry knocks him down at the 27, and another Tiger drive comes to a close. The first quarter stats, big edge in the running game for the Aggies, very even, but a slight edge for Ed, unsurprisingly, in the passing game. Stoll said he wanted to shut down that Aggie running game, and so far the Aggies have pretty much had it their way. Of course, the big run coming from Rodney Thomas for the touchdown. Aaron Glenn should give a pretty good position. He stands in his 30. Tyler almost had that one blocked by Mickens. Sails a nice one, though, into the wind. And they mark it out of bounds right at the 25-yard line. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Texas A&M University, the Southwest Conference, and Raycom Incorporated, intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without prior written consent is forbidden. Beautiful day for college football here in College Station, home of the Aggies. It's a little warm. It should get probably lower to mid 90s today. That should be an edge in the second half. For a &M. Thomas couldn't get away from Madison. Tigers make a lot of high tackles. Their defensive coordinator, Skip Hall, says we haven't forced enough turnovers in recent years. This is his first year on the job, but he says one thing you do about that is teach a fumble tackle. Turnovers, he says, aren't usually by accident. You can force turnovers. They've done a good job at that in this three-game win streak going back to last year. They're plus seven in the takeaway giveaways. Holy play action. And almost intercepted. Intended from McKeon, who has the first half touchdown. And Bo Adams, the backup free safety, almost picked it off. Where Pollock really got popped that time from the back side. I believe it was Chad Cotman as he gets ready to throw the ball. Well, no, it was Rick Lyle. The ball was just about the only place that you would have had a chance to complete the pass. It was just to the outside of the defensive player. Pollock really got popped. And Matt with a hand on that one. A near interception, third and 11. to the tight end, McKeon, and a first down to the 39. Hit by Adams, gain of 15. This is a big day for the A&M tight end. Shorp and McKeon both very active in this first half. That was an excellent read by Pollock. Watch the tight end just release outside, and he just steps up and hits him before the linebacker can get there. That shows you the strength of Corey Pollock's arm. He just threw it right past the linebacker. And against a defense like this, you're going to utilize your tight end maybe even a little bit more than you normally would. First man threw a big hole for the fullback. Cliff Gross. Backed up Doug Potter last year. He started quite a bit as a freshman, a true freshman in 1991. The right quarterback, Jason Oliver, had the tackle. You know, with the Aggies right now, Dave, you can see that there's a little bit of a flow. Missouri did not really react very well on that running play. The linebackers, who are usually very active, just did not get off their blocks, and that's what uh, Stoll was concerned about. Going up against a very physical Texas A&M offensive line, Missouri's going to have to uh, make big plays. Rodney Thomas should have the first down, just needed one. Steve Martin, the nose tackle, Started four times as a true freshman last year from Jefferson City. 291 pounder. 6'5. Now what you can do is you can come back after running the ball effectively with some kind of a play action pass. Let's see what Polig does here. Backfield is split and you guessed right. Play action from McElroy. Pretty good open field hit by Wells. After McElroy carries for nine yards. He scored on a similar play, 58 yards in their opener against LSU. 
All of a sudden, though, you come back now with a second and one or a second and two, and that's how you keep a defense really on the run. And that's what Corey Polig can add to an offense. If you've got a guy back there who can pull the trigger and throw the football and feel comfortable in reads, you can do so much more with an offensive team. Short yardage on second and one. They may not have gotten it this time with the give to Mackle Roy. Little major on the hit. Mackle Roy from Beaumont Central. Redshirt freshman who almost gave up that freshman redshirt year. He said uh, to Slocum, who said, we may have to activate you. We may have to use you in the Cotton Bowl because that was the first game of Greg Hill's suspension. If you need me, coach, I'll sacrifice my freshman year. They didn't need him, as it turned out, but quite a volunteer stance. Bullig on the sneak should have less than a yard, which they needed for the first down. I think they're going to spot it right over, right inside, I should say, the 40-yard line, so he should have that first down, and yes, indeed. If the Lions are straight here, he's got it. <laughs> they are, and he does. Now, you made a good point. This is a, a mixture of the run and pass, which they would like to be able to do every week. But when teams stop the run and can overload against the pass, that puts the pressure on Pulling that Oklahoma did last week, and that foils the whole formula. Well, Bob Toledo knew coming into this football game that they were going to have to throw the football. They couldn't just go back and hand it to Rodney Thomas. Play action again. All day again, complete. And down near the 25-yard line, James McKeon for 13 yards hit by Javon Lenhart. And McKeon, who is a backup to Greg Short, three catches already, 33 yards in the score. And once again, a safe play, a safe call, nice play action in the backfield, and you can just feel that Corey Pollock's confidence is building. You know, there's not a lot of love between these two teams. Every time a, an Aggie player gets up and a Tiger is there, some words, and I don't think they're asking how the family's doing. McElroy back in, lots of room. All the way, touchdown. 26 yards. Even if you didn't go to Texas A&M, that's one tradition that should spread nationwide, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, BYU doesn't have if that If you tradition, kiss me again, it's all over. <laughs> I'm leaving the booth. Uh, I promise. Venetulius is good. McElroy's third score of his freshman year, 21 up. Detron Smith missed the block, but he got the defensive player just outside enough for McElroy just to scoot into the end zone. It was man coverage in the defensive secondary, and the Aggies are having a great time. 21 to nothing, 9.27 left in the second. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. I want to give you the key to this room, because I know you're a smart guy. Sure, you could find a cheap hotel with rooms the size of a shoebox, or some luxury palace with the chandeliers and the bathrooms. How about a hotel that treats you as well as you treat your clients? And easy on the wallet. Take this key. You owe it to yourself. La Quinta. You're not staying at a hotel. You're staying with us. If you're watching your money closely, you'll like what you see in the new Ford Escort. You'll like the fact that it's priced thousands less than the leading imports. That it has a level of quality that helps bring it more repeat buyers than any other small car. And the fact that you can get any one of these highly equipped escorts for the same low price. Ford Escort. When it comes to quality and value, it's right on the money. Aggie fans, capture the excitement and tradition of Texas A&M football in the pages of Aggie Illustrated Magazine. Each issue is filled with game reviews, predictions, recruiting news, complete scouting reports, and much more, all from an Aggie perspective. Call 1-800-592-1222 to get the Aggie Sports News direct from College Station. 
Call now and we'll enter you in a drawing for a trip for two to the Texas A&M versus Texas game. Call now. 21-0, Texas A&M, 26-yard score by McElroy. Rodney Thomas has a 26-yard touchdown run as well. And, and the Southwest Airlines storyline really comes down to the fact that Corey Pullett has outplayed Jeff Handy, a quarterback. Look at this. 10 of 13 passing, 125 yards in the first quarter and a half. Very impressive by the young man from the field pass. No chance for a return as Venetulius kicks with the win this time. You know, not many coaches would put two true freshman kick returners back there together, but Missouri has just that set up with Rosetta Jenkins and Clayton Baker. Jeff Handy, big eight total offense leader, third in passing offense last year as a sophomore. Out of Blue Springs, Missouri, with a national high school passing record of 345 yards per game and 28 completions per game. And won the starting job midway last year. They haven't regretted it since. Washington carries the pile forward for about four. And Adams, who didn't start, he's bothered by a, a bad elbow. The flu caused him some practice time, cost him some time. He missed three days this week. But despite all that, he is their uh, best big play defender. Eight big plays credited to Sam Adams this year. And despite not starting, we have seen a lot of him here in this first half. Blitz, and he got it off in time. And single coverage almost caught by A.J. Ofadaway and a late interference flag on the safety, Michael Hendricks. I'll say that again. A.J. Ofadale. 89, he's their tight end. It's got a nice little ring to it, and Handy did a nice job getting that ball away. The Aggies were coming after him on a blitz situation. Ofadale coming back, and he had a big game last week, and he is a big target. Looked like he could have had it. I'm not sure about that call, but the official's standing right there. Defense! Defense! First down! Well, even if, and I think even this is questionable, even if their feet got tangled up, uh, I don't think I, their I don't feet think so. did. That's, uh, that's O'Fadley falling on his own, and a, a big break for Missouri to give them first and ten. Tailback Freeman, long tackle for about three, hit by Antonio Shorter. They have really tried to take some strides to improve their running game at Missouri. They need to next to worst in the country in running offense last year 92 yards per game that's a lot of pressure to put on your passing offense the Bob Stoll wanted that mix and he felt like with the emergence of Michael Washington he could do a little bit better job at getting that mix to 50-50 on passing run and he again evades the blitz this is caught with another flag down by Salee and Lance Teichelman in on the stop now, this is going to be an interesting call because that flag was thrown in the defensive secondary. Offensive linemen were downfield. It's a slip screen, something that Missouri loves to run. And that's an interesting call. Defensive holding by the split crew, four from the Southwest Conference and three from the Big Eight. Let me tell you why that is an interesting call, because the pass is thrown on one step or two steps for that receiver to get five yards down the field. The ball is already in the air into the receiver's hands before any kind of, a, any kind of commotion could, be, uh, could take place downfield. And so on that kind of a play, the style of that kind of a play is Holy not conducive. Defense! It'll be first down. To running... Uh, is not conducive to holding downfield. I don't think RC really likes that at all. Well, they, they really didn't like the interference call, and the replay bears out the Aggies' arguments there. Slocum equally displeased with the defensive holding, so Missouri on up now to the 48 yard line, another first and 10. Handy just in time off for Freeman, and a nice open field hit by Shorter. Antonio Shorter 
Carter, one of the few defenders to stand out in Norman last week. Two sacks among his nine tackles. That's as fine a football play as you're going to see by a linebacker because the whole flow of the play came to the right side and then it was handy at the very last moment going back to the left on a screen play. Shorter fought off a block and made the tackle. That was superb. Well, Texas Tech has the misfortune of going to Georgia after they were blown out at Tennessee a week ago. Washington and another nice open field hit this time by Jason Atkinson. A Butkus Award candidate. Third generation Aggie. And a late fumble call. The Aggies saying they got a fumble. Well, it was that late and they're still discussing it. The officials haven't ruled that way. You know, it's kind of interesting. I didn't even see it. I Bob, didn't either. And Bob Stoll sitting right there in front of it. And they're going to give, I think, the ball to the Aggies. Well, they, they still haven't signaled it. Humble recovery. And in first down. But now they have. See if we can pick it up. Yeah, let's take a look at it one more time. Here you can see Washington. He's got the ball and he's moving forward. Oh, that ball did pop out. Yes, Atkinson got it out before the knee went down. Amazing, but it came out. And it looked like Steve Solari may be on the recovery. So A&M already up 21-0. Takes over at the Missouri 45. Deep in the heart of Texas and adored by lovers of the Old West, is Fort Worth, a city that not only has its own stock market, but is also a major financial center because it's one of the 1900 communities served by Nations Bank, letting Justin Industries keep in step with the latest ideas in investment banking, giving families like the Trevinos a fresh start, and offering a range of resources that keeps people in Fort Worth from having to play second fiddle to anyone. We challenge you. We want you to do it. Because the best way to appreciate the all-new 32-valve, 280-horsepower Lincoln Mark 8 is to drive everything else first. People are driving everything else, but driving away in a Lincoln Mark 8. Mark 8 is now the most popular luxury coupe in America, outselling Acura Legend, Cadillac Eldorado, and the Lexus SC300 and 400 combined. The new Lincoln Mark 8. Drive everything else first. On Southwest Airlines, friends fly free for business, too. For example, if Dunn buys a ticket, Bradstreet flies free. Buy one round-trip ticket at Southwest Airlines' regular low, unrestricted fare, and your friend flies with you, free. So if Bausch buys a ticket, Lom flies free. Or if Ben buys a ticket, Jerry flies free. Friends fly free for business. On Southwest Airlines, just plain smart. Today's game is brought to you in part by the Texas Lottery, and tonight's Lotto Texas estimated jackpot is $3 million. A&M trying to take advantage of Michael Washington's fumble. First and 10 Aggies at the Tiger 45-yard line. Corey Pullard, 10 of 13 through the air, 125 yards, and a touchdown as the sweep comes left for only a couple. Rodney Thomas hit by Madison and Major. Out of about 55,000 or so at Kyle Field, and our Ford updates looking around the rest of the Southwest Conference. Texas Tech hasn't played at an SEC school in 23 years. Based on today, they may wait another 23 years. Texas hopes that the weather will be in their favor today against the Syracuse team that plays indoors. And again, TCU will have to play without Derek Cullors of the year again. Good hard-fought run by Thomas. He'll not have the first down, but he's close at the 38. Dietrich Wells and Daryl Majors combined for the stop. And A&M by 99 total yards over an explosive Missouri offense. You can't win if you're playing in College Station, allowing the opposing team to get 7.3 yards per play. It's hard to win when you give up two or three yards per play. Here. Wow, 
hurry in motion. And on second effort, first down and much more for Thomas. Inside the Missouri 30 where Mark Pedrotti chases him down. You know, yesterday I was watching practice and I looked at all of these running backs and they're all built just about the same. They've got very strong legs. They're very strong in their upper body. And they've got tremendous leg drive. And these running backs are having a blast. In fact, it was Thomas playing a defensive back position last night as they were going through their walkthrough practices trying to get the other team... Uh, I mean, other members of the team a little bit better. So it's a total team effort here right now, and they feel like, as R.C. Slocum talks about this camaraderie and, and coming back from such a devastating loss last week in Oklahoma, it's those are, he, he believes that those are the kind of things that are going to bring this team back together. And as you said, his talk after practice yesterday really centered around trying to Re-establish their game attitude, which is go out, play hard, have fun. He thinks they got away from that last week, and he wanted to snap them back to attention. Looks like he has. Bullock on the roll. Boy, they caught that with interference. What a tremendous pass and catch by Gene Lowry. But the pass was something special. He had about a foot-wide area in which to throw that. Even despite the interference, it looked like Lowry brought it in. You've got uh, interference on Missouri, and that was a beautiful throw. Watch this. This is the strength in this guy's arm. He's throwing this off his back leg, and he's putting it high and outside with a defender right on him. Watch this. Boom, just throws it right off his right foot. That is a beautiful throw. Strong arm. Pass interference. Defense. Automatic first down. 22. Jason Oliver, the right quarterback. As you look at Corey Polig, I can't help but notice his forearms. He's got those real strong forearms, and consequently, when he flips that football, it's got tremendous rotation on it. It's 6'3", 199 pounder. And the goal of his year so far. This pitch, Thomas turns inside near the 12-yard line. About eight on first down. Dietrich Wells tackling Thomas. Well, basically what they're doing right now is they're just spreading them out and running them from sideline to sideline. Missouri does not have a whole lot of depth on this defense. Their frontline guys have been pretty good. They haven't been very good today, but they, they can be pretty good. But they're just running, and the Aggies are just running them from sideline to sideline. And it looks like these defensive players are a little winded at this point. They've been on the field an awfully long time in this first half. Still on the ground for Thomas. And he won't have the first down. George Hunt and Major stop him a yard shot. Bob Toledo has mixed the run and the pass and the inside and the outside very effectively running for almost six yards per carry. I was anticipating that Missouri was going to come after him a little bit more. I was anticipating on first down that you would see eight guys on the line of scrimmage and then coming after him and force Corey Pulling to throw the football early, knowing of the struggles that he has had the first two weeks. But they sat back in a four-deep coverage in most cases. Thomas right side, big hole, high steps and score! I would love to have the chewing gum concession here in College Station, <laughs> wouldn't you? Rodney Thomas' second touchdown. That's, that's, that's the same couple as last time, I think. Give me some more gum. Busy first half for Terry Venetulius, who makes it 28-0 with 3.34 to go in the half. They're still at it. Yeah, here it is one more time. Watch the athletic ability of Rodney Thomas as he takes it around the right side. And the hurdle. Yeah, right over the top. And then the strength. Nobody is going to keep him out. 
of the end zone. Watch it one more time. Great view of it. Good shot with the camera, guys. Watch this. Rodney Thomas, there's the cut right back inside, going up over the top of his teammate and into the end zone. And we've got a wash here. 28 to nothing. You can see it in their eyes. They're pushing to raise the benchmark of quality. And after three million miles of testing, the people of Exxon know Phase 4 gasoline offers the highest level of engine cleaning. All for one reason. For proven high performance, you can rely on. Let the tiger set you free. Rely on the tiger. After you shave, now there's comfort to the power of three. It's new soothing Edge Aftershave with three soothing formulas for three specific skin types. An aloe formula that's alcohol-free to soothe sensitive skin. Extra moisturizers to soothe if your skin is dry. And a cool vitamin E splash for normal skin. Soothing better than ever with the power of three. New Edge Aftershave Skin Care for Men. Ultimate comfort. That's the Edge. Hey there, listen up. Education is money well spent. But refreshment is far more excellent. To fill me up with expectations. I got what I want, no imitations. School day! Ow. Just get on the walk the doctor Dr. Pepper. Just watch the doctor hold it. Dr. Pepper. We want it here. Just watch the doctor order. This is not what Bob Stoll had in mind. This is a team that led A&M at the half last year in Columbia, lost on a couple of big plays, 46 to 13. But they're not even on the same field with the Aggies so far today. Seven plays, 45 yards, and of course Thomas with the big touchdown run. Just past the tuba section. <laughs> and the Tigers again with the touchback. Take it from their 20. R.C. Slocum on the other hand, better than he ever could have dreamed. I think he expected a, a very close first half. This is a team that had not scored in their last three first halves. So much for that problem. Well, they've had it their way. No question about that. Jeff Handy coming up now. And the pressure's on him. He's looking at the big scoreboard. It says 28 to nothing. He knows what he has to do. And it down at the line by Eric England. Broken finger and all. Well, this Aggie defense looks a little more spirited than we saw them last week. No question about that. And when you start making plays, you start to make other plays. And then it's just kind of an infectious situation. And you come up with fumble recoveries and you break long pump returns and different things like that. We stack up a lot of three and outs. That's been Missouri's problem. First down here by Freeman. Too many times in this half. They have, uh, at least since their first possession, which saw, saw them marching down the field real well, they haven't been able to sustain anything. Nice little trap inside. Watch it. As the center snaps it, he's going to his left, and then coming right up the middle is Freeman after the block from the right guard comes across. If you have a team that's coming after the quarterback trying to get sacks, you can trap them, and that's what happened there. Good protection. Ball batted away again at the line, it looked like. Sam Adams had a good thrust from left end. Defensive coordinator Bob Davey, the second happiest man in College Station today, probably is just slightly behind Corey Pullett. You know, he was trying to find players, like we said a little earlier, that could make big plays. And that's what he feels like this defense is lacking. When Corian, of course, goes into the pros, and Buckley goes into the pros. He's looking for those kind of players to make big plays. He's had some today. Freeman has another first down, his second effective run on this drive into the secondary. Hendricks and White need him there. And Notre Dame with a missed extra point, still trailing Michigan State at home off their big win <laughs> over Michigan. Pittsburgh on the board finally. And Texas Tech on the board at last, just before halftime. Toughest schedule in the conference. 
Texas Tech at Nebraska at Georgia. We get A&M, Baylor, North Carolina State. Now wait a second, what did they just do there? They just measured, they brought a, they brought a pole. That's from that new high-tech, newfangled measuring stick that I've never quite figured out. You're asking the wrong guy. But it is a first down and 10. That we know. players go out of bounds. And he buried, fumbles, Aggies have it. Larry on the Aggie recovery and Reggie Graham causes the fumble with a big blitz from inside back. Bob Davey coming up with this blitzing situation. The Aggies coming late and this is what he's looking for. He's looking for big plays and they just keep getting them. And the fans here in Aggieland are getting ready to pucker up again. <laughs> So 2.45 still to go in the first half. Holy. Another short completion to their third tight end, Hayward Clay, number 85 with his first pass. Now I'm not sure I like the development of that pass play because what you want on every play, and Bob Toledo may write me a letter for this, but what you want is you want to have a chance to go for it on every down that you have a football and that time Corey Pollard was pretty much keyed into the tight end it's hard to say too many bad things about the Aggies offense right now because they're moving so well but I was looking for maybe some kind of a post pattern off that and then bringing the tight end across maybe slipping the back out of the backfield and if you had to you could throw it to the back well maybe that's what they have in mind here long roll and incomplete all uh, well covered over there by Jason Oliver, intended for Danny McRae, the speedster, redshirt freshman from Colleen Ellison. You know, Oliver looked like he had a hold of uh, the jersey of the little speedster coming out from the right side. Official said no call. Pollock's going to reload. On third and nine, a minute 55 and a half. And he's already at 28-0. Twice what they were favored over Missouri. Under pressure, and just a little low for Leland McElroy. If he makes that catch, he walks into the end zone. There ain't nobody there. There ain't nobody there, and Pollock held that ball as long as he could. He had a read screen on the right. We've got flags down. But literally, he would have walked into the end zone because the Tigers were coming. What? Those tackles, Steve Martin was pressuring Pulling and forcing that quick delivery. And an eligible receiver. Is the discussion. I think Bob Stoll is going to say let's refuse it. Get out of this position and maybe get the An ball eligible back. player downfield, decline, fourth down. Yeah, they still need nine. And the kick by Venetulius will still be fairly long. It'll be 40 yards. He is, however, the most accurate kicker in Aggie history, 30 of 43. And this year, one of two. 16 for 23 last year. This one from 40 is perfect. So AM cashes in another Missouri mistake and leads 31 to nothing with 146 in the half. Do you just get a small kiss if it's a field a goal? Handshake. A handshake. <laughs> just a, a little peck. That's all we want. <laughs> just a little peck. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk with the new athletic director here at AM, Wally Groff. We'll look at the Exxon Supreme Team, wide receiver nominees, and we'll look at the Texas Lottery first half highlights. And as always, we'll listen to the fighting Aggie Band. That is just moments away. I've always wondered why, why the fans here in Aggieland wanted 
wanted the Aggies to go for it on every fourth down. <laughs> Close to the goal line. <laughs> go for it. Just go for it. <laughs> Missouri causing a lot of their own misery with three turnovers on fumbles leading to 10 points here in the second quarter. I'm trying to decide if it's Missouri causing the problems or if it's Texas A&M taking the game in their own hands and saying, hey, listen, we have played so bad the first couple of games although they did beat LSU they didn't play well in the first uh, half it was them saying we're going to go take this game no chance for Clayton Baker that's a good point because two of the three were absolutely not really their fault just forced by good and hard and in fact perfect timing on blitz situations and you have to give Bob Davey a lot of credit for that they are not giving away those blitz situations Atkinson a couple of times waited until the very last moment to come on a blitz and that's very hard for an offensive lineman to recognize and they've been disguising things very well in the defensive secondary so you got to give them a lot of credit there is time to do something here 146 and a half as the Tigers again try to get something sustained have they done it since their first drive in the double coverage and almost picked off by Micken Holly, so big a part of the defensive game plan today, and they bottled him up pretty well, just a couple of catches for short yardage. Well, they've wanted to slow him down, and they certainly have done that. And as a quarterback in this situation, like Handy is facing, now he looks downfield, and people who used to be open are no, not open anymore. Nobody's available to throw the ball to. It starts to happen when he starts to get pressure. More pressure, another fumble, another AM recovery. It looked like, but I think maybe now it's back in the Tigers' hands. We'll wait for the indication. Went right through Adams. They say the Aggies hang on. At the Missouri 15 yard line. Watch Teichelman come in. He's getting double teamed, and he's the one that makes this play work. He knocks the ball away from Handy, and watch Adams in a perfect situation right there. One more time, watch Adams, he gets knocked down, and watch him get back up. And he's going for the football, nothing will deny him there. The ball squirts away, and then he reaches that big old left arm out and pulls it back in. Teichelman doing an outstanding job fighting off the double team. So another gift to try to cash in with a minute 34 in the second quarter. Tiger 15, they take over and pull it, looks to the end zone and single coverage and overthrows Tony Harrison. Kevin McIntosh was the hot defender back there and it's second and ten. Okay, I don't mind that. You know, you're going for it right there. You got a post pattern in the middle. Take a shot at it. If you don't have it, throw the ball away. That's what Corey Pulley has to learn and it looks like he's got it under control right now. You go for the end zone, you come up with a big play, you're leading 31 to nothing. Go for the juggler. 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 Last five possessions for Missouri have all been disastrous. McElroy in motion. Bullock again to the end zone, and they don't cover Harrison this time. Another Aggie touchdown. They're having fun in Aggieland. And this is getting a little tiring, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my. It, yeah, I think they're making up a little bit. They didn't get a chance to do it in the first half of those first two games, and they're getting a lot of practice. 38 to nothing. Can't be more wide open than Tony Harrison is here. Okay, watch Pollock. He comes back. He's looking that way. He checks the short receiver. Then he finds that Harrison is all by himself. It's just a quick little flip. And Harrison is all by himself. Watch Pollock one more time. Here is a guy that's been facing the pressure of teammates, the pressure of himself, the pressure of fans to make this Aggie team an excellent football team and unfortunately it comes with being the quarterback you got to take on those responsibilities I don't think there's any question that he's taken on the responsibilities of this challenge 
is a dejected group of athletes. As much as the Aggies have come forward, Missouri has to look up at that scoreboard and say, what the heck is going on? Another short drive after the turnover. The touchdown catch by Harrison, by the way, ties him for second all time on the A&M touchdown reception list with Don Jones, 11 in his career. He is still eight behind the all-time leader, Bob Long. Ohio State adds a score, and they are out over Pittsburgh. And these last two or three minutes have taken about a half hour here with Missouri fumbling and A&M scoring repeatedly. And Benatulli is repeatedly driving the ball five and six yards into the end zone. Now, here is what's happened the last five times Mizzou has had it. Four fumbles and a punt. And no more than five plays on any of the possessions. That's not very good football right there. You can't win anywhere if you're doing those kind of things. And I'm sure that there are some people over on that other sideline that are kind of looking at the pride side of football right now. You just can't do that and be successful. And they may be very content just to bleed that last 120 off the clock now. Nothing else with these old Freeman carries. You know, R.C. Slocum is not going to stop the clock right now. He, he and Bob Stoll are very close friends. In fact, they go way back. They go back 23 years. Both graduate assistants in 1970 at Kansas State is training carries again. And they had a pack back then, and they said, whichever one of us becomes a head coach, will hire the other. Well, the first to become a head coach was Stoll. And he was unable to lure R.C. Slocum from the staff here at A&M to join him at UMass. I guess not that big a surprise. And then he went to UTEP, and he once again tried to lure Slocum from the Aggie staff and again was unsuccessful and now they're both head coaches in their fifth year. And I'll be doggone, he did call timeout. He called a timeout with 28 seconds remaining. Uh, Tigers will look at third down and five. Well, big first half success by A&M. Big problems for Texas Tech at Georgia in their first half. And in about an hour, Syracuse at Texas. That's a game where the conference could uh, erase a lot of their recent bad memories if they can knock off the sixth-rated Orangemen in the heat in Austin. Rice off their shutout victory over Tulane back home against Sam Houston State. Baylor with another big test for their pass defense, which today is second worst in the country. They're one and one with an upset over Fresno State, a big loss at Colorado last week, and Utah State is the number two passing offense in the country. They'll get a test in Logan as they take on the Aggies of Utah. Also the Utah State Aggies up there. That's yeah, okay, honey. We'll score in a few minutes. That's what they say around here. Yeah. We'll, we'll score a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Not what he envisioned. Bob Stoll was encouraged by the ease of their victory over Illinois last week, 31-3. to Their best defensive performance in six years. And now this. A complete collapse in the first half. Washington... Bearing the pile of 10 yards up near midfield. That's that big 270-pound fullback who goes 23 yards. Stops the clock at 19 seconds. And this time it's Missouri taking timeout. Nice little trap play inside. And here is how a 270-pound player, maybe 285, I don't know, he looks big to me, just keeps running and piling along and just driving. Watch Atkinson trying to make some kind of a play here. Who gets taken right out, and there goes Washington right by him, and Atkinson knew that uh, it was his responsibility to get there and put his body in front of Michael Washington, which is not an easy thing to do. You know, Missouri kind of let this thing get away from them when they started to throw the ball a little bit more and get away from handing the ball to Washington. Early on, they were giving him the football, and it shows you the value of a running game in a passing We've seen a very good mix 
with Texas A&M with running and passing. There aren't a whole lot of bad things that you can say about the Aggies mix in that offense, but when Missouri started going straight to that uh, passing game, put a lot of pressure on Jeff Handy, and the Aggies start to come after him. And it makes a big play. This is a, a fine talent, too. They've made him look very ordinary today. School records as a sophomore who started only six games last year. Inherited the job with no questions asked this year. Now, he's a good player. He's a good player, no question about that. His first start last year, 480 yards through the year at Oklahoma State. Next week, 424 at Nebraska, the most ever allowed by a Husker defense. Freeman knocked backward after a game of seven. And with nine seconds remaining, another timeout by Missouri. Their next to last timeout. With nine seconds, you figure they either take one big shot at the end zone or one quick shot for about 15 or 20 and try for a field goal. But what does a field goal get you when you're, when you're 38 nothing? Yeah, you got to score a touchdown. You know who's been taken completely out of the football game today is Ophadale. Ophadale has turned into a pretty good receiver for him. He's their big tight end. 6'7", about 260 pounds, and he's been catching some passes and doing a lot better job at getting getting open and, and then making the catch when Handy's delivered him the ball. He's been taken totally out of this offense, and when you're a pass offense, you want to make sure that you utilize your tight end. He is a huge target, and you want to use him on some hooks and some crosses over the middle. The ultimate compliment for a Missouri tight end, Helen Winslow, the all-time great from Missouri, and then San Diego says, this guy will break all of my Missouri records. Yeah, Kellen Winslow came in and talked to us a little bit about uh, what he's doing. Of course, he had an outstanding career uh, at Missouri. They went to the San Diego Chargers, was part of Air Coriel, and did such a magnificent job as a pro. Became a Pro Bowl player. Now he's an attorney just getting ready to take the, the bar exam. He says he might be interested in the athletic director's position at the University of Missouri. Which is currently held by the great former coach Dan Devine. They run Holly on the pitch pass. And with four seconds to go, we'll call that last time out. Hoping that Holly would shake free. That's one of their favorite plays. And because it's so popular, the Aggie defense was ready for it. And they held Holly to maybe two yards. A very light breeze here in College Station as Missouri just trying to make something positive happen in this football game. First year that Stull has had his recruits. Fifth year, he's got a lot of seniors who redshirted in their three-year letterman. And he is looking for their first winning season in 10 years. He used to have a, a fine football heritage at Missouri when Devine was the coach. Fixtures in some of the big bowls every year. They have lost that. Stull has brought a lot of excitement to the offense, but so far has not turned that into a winning season, but thinks this is their year finally. You know, it's kind of interesting because Stoll came from UTEP, and he went to the Miners after the Miners had struggled for so many years and built a winning team there. And we talked about that about five years ago. He came to Missouri, and this is his fifth season there trying to build this winning uh, feeling back with the Tigers. And you mentioned this. Last year, they were just trying to find some great players. Now they feel like they've got them, but they don't have a whole lot of depth. Depth, it sure isn't showing today. He had his three favorite wideouts all on that left side, and it is knocked away, incomplete, on the first half. Maggie fans should be exhausted from all their celebration. They lead 38-0 at halftime, and we'll have the Aggie Band when we come back to Kyle Field. The Exxon Game of the Week is brought to you by the 1993 Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team, the all-conference team that will be determined by you, the fans. By Southwest Airlines. by Winn-Dixie. By Ford.
by Texas Farm Bureau. And by Wrangler, the Western original. Way back in 1947, cowboys designed Wrangler cowboy cut jeans to be comfortable in the saddle. Or out of it. Wrangler, the Western original. Some people just have to travel first class, which is why the people at Lincoln made Lincoln Town Car. With the most fuel-efficient V8 engine in its class, six-passenger room, the safety of standard dual airbags, and anti-lock brakes. And now, some of the most attractive lease terms or special customer incentives let you have it all. Lincoln Town Car. If you want to travel first class, you simply have to have it. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer. Cowboys designed Wrangler cowboy cut jeans to be comfortable around the office. Especially when your office is 40,000 acres. Wrangler, the Western original. Hi, welcome to the ranch. The Post Oak Ranch, that is. Houston's unique upscale country and western nightclub located in the heart of the Galleria area. There's always something going on at the ranch. Happy Hour Buffet. Dancing to the hottest country and top 40 hits. Ladies Night, Tuesdays and Thursdays featuring free valet parking and drink specials to all unescorted ladies. From diamonds to denim, Rolexes to Roper. The Post Oak Ranch. It's the place to be. Feeder Road at 610 in San Felipe. It is a house. It's the Maya Chronicle Winter House game. Oh, that explains it. I'd never seen a monster with windows before. You can win a $125,000 house in your choice of five Friendswood communities. Sir, so you can also win prizes from Dillard's every week. And $5,000 cash weekly. So that's what that green stuff is. Oh, my goodness. It's as big as a house. No, Mama. Bigger. What's her problem? She forgot to enter. Now one of college football's great traditions, the Fightin' Aggie Band. Graduation. I want to be governor of Texas. Hmm. Governor of Texas. 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 Governor of Colorado. Well, five out of six isn't bad. At the schools of the Southwest Conference, higher education turns dreams into reality. Cash, Texas was never very famous for much. They had a UFO sighting there one time. Then came Cash Celebration. Yeah, that's what that says, Cash Celebration. 
I thought they were up there now. Cash is gonna be on the map with this game. Cash celebration? Went up to 4,000 inches. Look at that. <laughs> you got a winner. I'm a winner. Oh, you are not. I'm a fearless scratching. <laughs> Farm Bureau Insurance. Our agent helps us get the right coverage. So we're always protected. When you have a claim, Farm Bureau works hard to help you get things back to normal. They can help you with a plan to make your retirement years great years. Helping you is what we do best. That's why people across America, from every walk of life, depend on Farm Bureau Insurance. Americans like you. For auto, home, and life, call your local Farm Bureau today. If you have had past credit problems and you want to finance a car or truck, maybe Mack Ike Chevrolet can help. If you have a job, stability where you live, a checking account, a telephone list in your name, and want to finance a car or truck, we can help you with a reputable lender. Stop in for a visit with Dean Selman, Special Finance Services Manager, or call 497-6600 and ask for Dean. Good people can overcome bad credit. Mack Ike Chevrolet can help. Number 16, Texas A&M, 38 to nothing at halftime over Missouri. And it's time for our La Quinta Top 10 report. Big game tonight in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and it's not basketball. Number one, Florida State at number 13, North Carolina. Alabama, 30 to three over Arkansas, Virginia Tech later at number three, Miami. Notre Dame now with a field goal on top of Michigan State for the first time all day, nine to seven. Five and nine play in Florida later, Tennessee at the Gators, number six Syracuse in Austin later to take on Texas. Colorado and Stanford also later tonight, number eight Nebraska at UCLA, number 10 Michigan takes the week off. They play at home against the Houston Cougars in one week. Here it's an Aggie shutout at halftime. We'll have more halftime activities in a moment. We challenge you, we want you to do it. Because the best way to appreciate the all-new 32-valve, 280-horsepower Lincoln Mark 8 is to drive everything else first. People are driving everything else, but driving away in a Lincoln Mark 8. Mark 8 is now the most popular luxury coupe in America, outselling Acura Legend, Cadillac Eldorado, and the Lexus SC300 and 400 combined. The new Lincoln Mark 8. Drive everything else first. Frequent flyers on most airlines are thousands of miles from a free trip. But on Southwest Airlines, our company club frequent flyer members are only eight short round trips away. Southwest Airlines Company Club, the shortest route to free trips. Southwest Airlines has so many flights, if you miss one, you can always catch the next one. Or the next one. Or the next one. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. You look like a person on the go, am I right? You're a VIP kind of guy, am I right? You don't have time for some fancy smancy breakfast, am I right? At La Quinta, they've customized a free continental breakfast for busy guys like yourself. In fact, this blueberry muffin was baked with you in mind. La Quinta, you're not staying at a hotel, you're staying with us. The Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team is the official 1993 All-Conference Team, selected by you, the fans. You can vote for your favorite players at any participating Exxon station beginning September 24th. Today's Supreme Team nominee is Lloyd Hill of Texas Tech. Against Nebraska, the senior receiver caught six passes for 106 yards. He is now fifth all-time in Southwest Conference receiving yards and is within 300 yards of the league record. For being our nominee of the week, Exxon will donate $1,000 on behalf of Lloyd Hill to the Southwest Conference Scholarship Fund. 
There are eight other wide receivers on the Supreme Team ballot, including the Aggies' Tony Harrison, Jimmy Lee of Rice, and Brian Berry of SMU. And with the Aggies on top at halftime, 38-0 over the Missouri Tigers. The happiest man in uh, College Station right now, maybe the happiest in all of Texas, is the new athletic director at Texas A&M, Wally Groff. First of all, uh, congratulations for getting a job that uh, I know a lot of people hoped you would get after many years, 28 years of service to this school. Well, thank you very much. I'm really excited about the, being named athletic director, and I'm humbled about all the support I've received from throughout the state. Now, this is the same team that couldn't score in the first half, up 38 points? Well, it is the same team, but it's a little different situation, and we're just excited about the uh, scoring this half. What do you see uh, as, as your mission, if you want to use that word, as athletic director? Where do you want to take the athletic department? Well, I want all of our uh, athletic teams, the men's and the women's teams, to be competitive. And I want to do it all, everyone to do it the right way, and that is uh, being compliance with all NCAA rules. And that's that's utmost because we've had a, there is a negative perception about Texas A&M from the past, and we need to do something to change that image. Do you expect to hear, and I know a lot of Aggie fans are wondering, is there anything else to come from the NCAA besides the individual uh, suspensions that they announced before the Oklahoma game last week? Well, we would expect to get an official inquiry, which would uh, look at uh, whether or not we've been some infractions and have uh, been made and charged against Texas A&M. There, uh, over the last several years, has been a push to get a new basketball arena built here, and it's been pushed back by uh, the state officials. And, and the last talk has been about maybe uh, increasing the uh, capacity at G. Raleigh White. Is that, is that one of the projects that you'll undertake here? Well, yes, we do have a, a feasibility study was completed just recently, and uh, the Board of Regents approved a plan just uh, this week about the, uh, putting some money together to put a POR, which is a program of requirements, to look into the renovation of uh, G. Riley White. Tony Baroni will be happy about that. And I'm sure Tony would be, and Tony's a super guy, and he's going to do great things for our basketball program. Congratulations again, and thanks for spending some time with us. Well, thank you very much. Enjoyed being here. All right, that's Wally Groff, athletic director here at Texas A&M. They lead 38-0 more at halftime in a moment. At Texas A&M University, we're proud of our tradition of preparing Aggies for a lifetime of success. Looking back, I feel that A&M as a whole taught me how to go into the community and help other people as well as be a leader on my job. When you leave school, you have two things. You have your education, which relates directly to your, your job, and then you have personal skills, which allow you to deal with people. I had an advantage coming out of Texas A&M. There's no doubt. Preparing top students for the workforce. At Texas A&M, it's our greatest tradition. Don't pay it. Are you paying the regular retail price at your supermarket? Stop it. Every day, Winn-Dixie discounts the regular retail price. On chips and snacks, 10% off. Magazines and books, 10% off. Patios, 20% off. School supplies, 20% off. Hair care products, 25% off. Cosmetics, 30% off. Greeting cards, 40% off. Gift wrap and bows, 50% off. Every day at Winn-Dixie, your low price leader. After you shave, now there's comfort to the power of three. It's new soothing edge aftershave with three soothing formulas for three specific skin types. An aloe formula that's alcohol free to soothe sensitive skin. Extra moisturizers to soothe if your skin is dry. And a cool vitamin E splash for normal skin. Soothing better than ever with the power of three. New edge aftershave skin care for men. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. Today's game is brought to you in part by your Lincoln Mercury dealers. Thirty-eight nothing at halftime here at Kyle Field. Dave Barnett, Giff Nielsen, 
the Aggies have got to be saying, where did that come from? They had three straight games in which they couldn't do anything offensively in the first half. They got it started today with a perfect first drive engineered by Corey Pollock. We're talking about Corey Pollock a lot. We're talking about the talent at running back. But I think really the big difference in this ball game has been the offensive line and the block of the offensive line and the controlling of the defensive line. Watch this little pass from Pollock. Nice play action fake. Hits his big tight end coming out of the, uh, the tight end position. Missouri fumbling has caused a lot of the troubles, but several of these fumbles have been caused by good tackles. Aaron Glenn here. And watch this one coming right over the middle. I just believe this is Jade Lowe as he, or Jad Lowe, gets that ball knocked away from Aaron, I'm um, by uh, Aaron Glenn. And then I believe it was uh, Robinson, if I'm not mistaken, who gets on that football. So a very aggressive attitude as far as the Aggie defense this afternoon. Leland McElroy, the backup at tailback, 26 yards for the touchdown. Which one will it be, McElroy or Thomas? He can put anybody in there. Speaking of R.C. Slocum, at that time it was McElroy, and what talent. And this time, it's Thomas. This made it 28 nothing. Watch the block of the offensive line. They just open up the hole. You can see Gross with the kick out, Thomas with the hurdle into the end zone, and that's just beautiful football. Taking advantage of opportunities. That's what this game is all about. Our first half highlights brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Now, if you're R.C. Slocum, I mean, is it just time to, to look at some of your depth in the second half? I don't think you want to look at uh, your de uh, depth uh, necessarily. I think you want to keep the continuity going. Of course, you're going to come out with your starters, and, and then if you some of the kids who get a chance to play uh, who don't, you don't normally get a chance to play, they can come in and, and get some uh, good action in. 38 nothing. Texas A&M will have the start of the second half here in Kyle Field when we come back. Cash Texas was never very famous for much. They had a UFO sighting there one time. Then came Cash Celebration. Oh, yeah, that's what that says, so Cash Celebration. I thought they were upside down. Cash is going to be on the map with this game. Cash Celebration? Went up to 4,000 instantly. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a winner. I'm a winner. Oh, you are not. Tom was feeling scratchy. <laughs> It's where the careers of naval officers are launched, and where pleasure boaters come to cast away from it all. But Annapolis, Maryland is also a major financial center because it's served by Nations Bank, which enables coastal properties to call on a depth of experience in financing, offers the overstreets everything from equity loans to mutual funds, and gives people a bank that puts greater financial power at their command. In Annapolis and in 1,900 other communities throughout our nation, Cowboy's business is a business of silence. A hundred miles of fence gives a person time to think. To wonder about who he is, what the world is coming to. Talk to a cowboy long enough and you'll get an opinion on everything. That's because he's had time to think about everything. Yeah, at Wrangler, we know cowboys. Our genes were invented by them. The rest is in us. Wrangler, the Western original. Julius is no doubt blistered right in step. He'll go to work again. And this one might be returned by Jenkins. A yard deep will bring it out. And knocked out at the 20. Rosette New Jenkins. True freshman. Let's check out Scott Wells, the 12th man for today's game. Might be in... Oh, they changed on me. Hang on. Well, I can't see underneath that face mask, but watch this. This is this is former Denton Bronco, Robert Smoot, now the 12th man. Uh, I, I guess you can keep changing that 12th man jersey because they've done so. It started out to be Scott Wells. Maybe he's tired. Well, he should be. Washington runs into Sam Adams and loses yardage. These people are exhausted. But Sam Adams is just getting going. Look at Alabama rolling over Arkansas. Oh. Alabama, another team that thought they had a problem at quarterback until this year. And you won't hear much about the Aggie quarterback problem for a while. 
Well, not until next week. <laughs> Interesting thing in athletics, it's uh, kind of, what did you do for me yesterday? Second and 15. Andy gets away from Adams this time. And he's complete to Frank Jones. Aggies are arguing that it was incomplete and uh, caught on one hop by Jones. And I think they win their argument. Incomplete. Well, what a nice job by Handy that time as we take a look at the game plan and give some grades on just exactly what uh, happened with this team in the first half. Of course, R.C. Slocum wanted to deck Holly, and he was talking about Kenny Holly, and they've done a pretty nice job on that. You give him a B. Everybody says we want to keep pulling for Corey. Well, Pollock has been absolutely outstanding. And to get that attitude, that don't mess with Texas A&M attitude has been superb. you got to give him an A for that. Washington is tripped up. And uh, Missouri waving the white flag with that play call on third and long. As the Aggie defense gets a standing ovation. And Aaron Glenn gets another crack. He has returned two punts today for an average of 59 and a half yards. That's phenomenal. Let's see what happens here. Nickens almost got a piece of it, but he's come sailing through several times from that left side. Very short. He might have gotten a finger on it. And good field position with a 35-yard kick. Reveille's going to take the rest of the afternoon off. She is just basking in the sun, isn't she? Here in Aggieland. Boy, she's content. Here we go with the Sporting News Unit Rankings. These are national rankings, and you can see the overall offense. Uh, Aggies right now rated number six in the country. Their offensive uh, line and backfield, you can see that. The defensive line number one in the country. Those rankings by the Sporting News coming into the season. Ford remains the quarterback, and in all kinds of... Uh, time to work with he finds Tony Harrison who had the wide open touchdown late in the first half his fourth catch of the day and you know what that's what a lot of people felt like was going to happen with this football team we saw those sporting news rankings a lot of people felt like that this uh, team was going to play up to those expectations they knew they had a tough battle in Norman Oklahoma it was a tough game for him, but you can see today what kind of talent this Texas A&M team has and the arm of Corey Pollock as he throws a, a dart at Tony Harrison. Again, Missouri coming off their best defensive game in six years. And they meet nothing but disaster, and now injury added to insult as Mark Pedrotti goes down. Pedrotti may have injured himself on the play. You know, this defense has been known as and given themselves the the uh, the nickname as the Black Attack. And obviously, if Pedrotti is hurt, as they get ready for their conference play, this would be a tremendous blow for them. But he came flying through, sacrificed his body, and let's see what uh, happens if we can get kind of a... Here, here you can see it. Watch one more time. Thomas cutting up field, and you can see Pedrotti... Oh, it's a leg whip. Ooh. That right leg, he came around, he got knocked off his feet, and then watch as he brings that leg around. I believe it's his right leg. Watch that. It is his right leg. And a, oh, true boy. Right off the kneecap of Rodney Thomas as he was sprinting past, and that is a, an ugly. Mark Pedrotti, Jr. from Shawnee Mission, Kansas. Timeout with 11.28 to go in the third. I grew up in Texas these days. At the 38-yard line, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for Ryan Matthews. Bullock at his, six, his first six tries today. And 13 of 20 for 152. Well, that time, you know, it was interesting because he was back in the pocket. He still got some pressure but was composed enough to throw a pretty good pass out on the outside. It was a little bit high and it was a little bit hard. But the composure in the pocket is a lot different than we've seen the first couple of games. Third and eight, Thomas. 
no first down as Jerome Madison and Daryl Major, who have been two of the few bright spots for the Tiger defense combined for the tackle. Really a nice football afternoon in College Station. Slight overcast. Keeping it cooler than we thought it might be, it was uh, predicted to be low 90s. And the breezes come in handy as well. Then Atulius is on to try what would be easily the longest kick of his career. This would be 53 yards. His career long is 47. R.C. Slocum over on the sideline saying, no, don't snap it, don't snap it. And they let the 25-second clock run out. Now, why would they Why would they get out there in a field goal situation and then say, no, don't Dead snap ball. it? Get ball. Delay a game. Offense. Still fourth down. I think after analyzing and looking at it, I think R.C. says, we're going to go ahead and punt the ball. And I think it's respect for Bob Stoll. I mean, it's 45 to nothing. We've got 10-21 left to go in the third quarter. I think they're going to say, hey, listen, let's just take the penalty, the delay a game penalty, and kick the football and uh, give it back to Missouri. And I think that that is a very wise choice. Bennett with a very high but short kick. And an Aggie bounce down at the seven-yard line. Kick goes 33, but it pins the Tigers deep. Dennis Allen downing it for AM at the seven. 45 nothing. You know what's kind of interesting? Bob Stoll said, finally, finally, we've got some players that we really believe we can win with. But when you do things like this, it's very difficult to put a W up in that column. And he said, at the middle of last year, we tried to go out and find the players that were going to be the, the foundation for our program. And obviously, Handy having problems right now. They don't seem to be able to do anything right. But they finally found the players that they wanted to go with. They knew they didn't have a whole lot of depth. But they had some frontline players where they could finally be competitive. And I know that this is just eating inside of him to come down here and play like this because they were riding a three-game winning streak. Which, surprisingly, was the longest in the Big 8 this week. Yeah, they finished off the season last year. They beat Kansas State and then Kansas. Second down. And it's kind of like the wheels are falling off after opening with such an impressive game last week against Illinois. I don't think uh, too many people thought that they would blow Illinois away like they did, but they did it. And they were coming in here with some high expectations and Texas a and did last week in Norman. Joe Freeman, who looked like he was out on his feet after being hit hard on their first possession of the half, is back in there. Finally, some good injury news for the Tigers and a short gain to bring up a third and 12 from deep in their own end. But you know, this game is kind of being played out by the defensive team right now with the Aggies, but have you noticed a rejuvenated feeling with this Aggie defense today? I mean, it's been very apparent, especially during the second quarter. They look like the wrecking crew again, don't they? Now, Under heavy pressure, way high for Holland. Well, there is a quarterback that does not have a whole lot of confidence right now. That was not a confident throw. Watch Hawley as he takes the ball and comes back to the right. Well, you can see the offensive line, but watch him. Teichelman once again just knocks him around, and that's been the day for the quarterback, Jeff Handy. As he has come back to pass many times, he has been knocked around, and Teichelman on the sideline saying, boy, this is really enjoyable. Rickens again comes close to the block and holds up. Glenn from his 40. Oh, wiped out. We had a good burst to get past the first couple of guys and then just blasted by Brian Murray, backup fullback, after a 12-yard return of a 54-yard punt by Kyle Pooley. You know, you never know when these kind of hits are going to come, so as an offensive player, you don't want to 
dance too much when you score. You want to kind of keep an even keel. Boy, that is just a kisser. And nobody scored a touchdown. Well, Glenn sets up A&M again at Missouri's end of the field. And it's hard to remember the last time A&M didn't have great field position. Chance to keep it on the ground out of the eye. Rodney Thomas, who debuted with 201 yards in the opener against LSU this year. And uh, that has kept him high among the national rushing leaders, number three in the country coming in. That carry for Rodney, his 15th of the day, and he's up near 90, 87 yards now. They'd like to get him, of course, as, as many yards as possible without rubbing it in. And you'd think they'd at least get him 100 before they pull him. Movement that time by Calvin Collins, the right guard, the freshman. And A&M will march back. A couple of times they've caught Calvin. I think the biggest surprise is what the, the numbers look like for Jeff Handy today. Good ball. Ball start. The offense. Still second down. 10 for 21 for 93 yards. Now, last year, Handy threw for 480 in his first start at Oklahoma State. 424 at Nebraska. Most anyone has ever thrown against Nebraska. 12 school records as a sophomore, and he has looked worse than ordinary today under this heavy wrecking crew run. Thomas, closer to 100 and close to the 45. Major in on about every other tackle. Now let's take a look one more time at Earl Brooks working out there and watch Sharp as he comes off the line. Excellent push with the legs. That's just a nice job. And he just doesn't stop until the job is finished. That's what you want with your tight end. Brooks just 211 pounds. The strike in, they call it. He's the man to replace the injured Pedrotti. On third and nine. Wide open. Short. Inside the 50. A 32-yard hookup as another pass to the tight end goes for big real estate. That's been Pulling's favorite target today. Boy, a beautiful throw coming to your left, which is one of the hardest passes for a quarterback to throw. He just put it right on the money. So Sharp on the right side, last play, doing a nice job blocking as he took Brooks to the ground. Now he comes across from the right side to the left as Pulley came out of a play-action fake, rolling to his left, put it right on the money, big tight end, making things happen. And that is Steve Martin, the nose tackle, getting some medical attention way back upfield at the Aggie 45. One thing to get beaten as badly as Missouri is, it's another thing to get beaten up, and that's what's happening to that's him what, Yeah, that's what's happening. I know that has to concern Bob Stoll as, as he tries to get ready once again for the conference. This is a non-conference game for him, and he really felt like he had some talent maybe to compete with the stronger teams in the Big Eight. But certainly after looking at this one, he's got a long way to go still. Thomas again and drops it picks it back up at the two-yard line and it's a touchdown Rodney Thomas in this instance was both good and lucky They get a better bounce. No, that was absolutely perfect. No question about it. So the Aggies cracked 50, and Venetulius makes it 52 nothing. Here it comes right at us. You can see exactly what the players are looking at. Down on the field, play like you're the middle linebacker, and here comes Rodney Thomas. Can you stop him? Can you get him? Here he comes, dancing across. You can see the power in the late drive. The ball passes right to him. And that is just a beautiful effort on the part of the Aggie offensive line. And Rodney Thomas, 52 to nothing.
Cache, Texas was never very famous for much. They had a UFO sighting there one time. Then came Cash Celebration. Oh, yeah, that's what that say, that's Cash Celebration. I thought that was upside down. Cash is going to be on the map with this game. Cash Celebration? Went up to 4,000 instantly. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a winner. I'm a winner. Oh, you are not. Tom was still a scratching. <laughs> Diet Dr. Pepper, the taste you've been looking for. There are certain chores you would only ask a diesel to handle. That's about to change. Drivers of full-size pickups pretty much know what they're in for. That's about to change. Three touchdowns for Rodney Thomas today, junior from Groveton, Texas. Who cracked the century mark on that last carry. He's now up to 107. Next week, we're in Waco, Texas Tech and Baylor as we begin conference play here on the Exxon Game of the Week. And Grant Pan, the former Baylor coaching legend, joins us here on Raycon. Who expect it to be two of the major challenges for AM in the conference race this year. Well, they're getting an eye full today. Tigers again take over from their 20. And you start to wonder at what point both teams will go into some deep substitution. Well, you asked me at halftime, you said, do you substitute right now? No, you don't substitute until the third quarter is over with. I think you go with your guys and just play your guys that you're going to go with uh, throughout the rest of the season until the third quarter. If you're a team that can't stop somebody and you're having major problems scoring some points, then you got major problems scoring some points and you can't stop anybody. Okay, I, well, think, I, think you, I, I think you go to the fourth quarter, and then when you get to the fourth quarter, you start to uh, substitute. And I'm telling you what, Jeff Handy has had some people in his face, and one of them has been Sam Adams. By the time this game is over with, they're going to be close friends. They might already be very good friends right now. So I'm exchanging addresses a couple of series ago. Those are horrendous numbers for a good quarterback. And a tremendous testament to the return of the Aggie defense today. Second and ten. And nothing on the ground for Antoine Johnson. I, I believe that was Teichelman again. Man, has he had a football game. Total control. First team all Southwest Conference last year and predicted to be so again this year. Westwood High in Round Rock. Senior in his fourth year as a starter. Third and 12 for Missouri. Adams again, very close to Jeff Handy. Watch Sam Adams. No fooling him as he just came right across. The guard was late. He was so quick off the football. He ran right past the guard. And as, if you're a quarterback, you don't have a chance here. Watch this. How would you like to turn around and see that? Who's supposed to pick him up? Radoski was pulling, so it's not who missed it. No, that was the guard. It was the right guard coming up. But Sam Adams got across fast enough where Radoski couldn't get it. Well, unless this one roll, and it'll go dead at the 37. So that was not Vodosky's assignment to go ahead and pull and get out of the way? Well, he was supposed to go and get out of the way, but he's supposed to cut the end if the end comes inside. But it was Adams coming across. 
and quicker than Badoski could get out there. Corey Pullen's day is done. His backup, Tommy Preston, sophomore from here in College Station, and m consolidated into the game. Great physical specimen, great arm. Took his high school team to the 4A state finals as a junior, the semifinals as a senior. As his favorite player is Randall Cunningham, and he'll draw some physical comparisons to Cunningham. And McElroy, another second teamer in the backfield, takes the pitch for good yardage. Last week, there were a few people starting to say, well, maybe Preston should play a little more at quarterback. Well, the, the coaches never thought it was that much of a competition. Yeah. In fact, Slocum says there will never be a quarterback controversy as long as I'm the head coach here at a &E. He hates quarterback controversies, and they put that to rest early in the week. They both called in. Bob Toledo and R.C. Slocum called in Corey Pollig as we watch the Aggies continue to grind on the ground. Called him in and said, hey, listen, don't worry about anybody behind you. Preston is a good little quarterback, but he is not our number one quarterback. Corey, you are the guy. Don't worry about anybody behind you. Just take care of business. And I think that that was a load off Corey Pollard's mind because he's never, never been in a situation where he had to struggle. Now, Preston can play. He just hadn't played a whole lot. Three passes all last year, two for three. McElroy locks a yardage, and he gets about seven or eight before tripping, and he's upset that that happened because he saw the possibility of a lot more. You know, it's really interesting, once again, if you line McElroy up but next to Greg Hill, who, of course, is serving out his NCAA suspension, and you put him there next to Rodney Thomas, all three of these players look very similar. Great legs. You can see why they have such good leg drive. Very strong in the upper body. Very difficult to bring down with just one tackle. The styles, though, are a little different. McElroy with a nice cutback and a dive to the 31. Rodney Thomas, very different from Hill. Thomas wore straight ahead. Hill, more of a guy who will follow and use his blockers in a more mature fashion. And McElroy, more of a water bug. And you can see the, the moves inside right here. Wonderful job once again by the offensive line. Dowson, of course, is a, an all-conference performer. What a player he is. Tyler Harrison, Calvin Collins, the young kid that we've been, when, we've been talking about. Jason Matthews, Tyler Harrison. Okay. They're just doing a heck of a job on that offensive line. Etron Smith with some nice second effort. And they're now starting to, to mix in some of the backups up front in addition to the backfield. Jeff Jones is in, 72, a tackle. John Richard now checking in at 79 at left guard. Todd Matheson at 73, right guard. Roy out in motion. Second and eight. Complete first down. Tight end is the target again. Second catch today by Hayward Clay, the third team tight end. I think when you're going to throw the ball, Dave, you've got to utilize that tight end. I've been very impressed with the game plan that offensive coordinator Bob Toledo has put together and how these quarterbacks have executed that game plan. The Aggie coaches wanted to simplify their game plan this week. They have done that. They got back to the basics of their offense, and that is utilizing the tight end. And they've done a very nice job of it. Missouri might have been offside here. McElroy carries for five or six. Looked like the right defensive line, uh, the defensive end from Missouri might have been slightly offsides, and that's the call. Just a total breakdown. Injuries now starting to stack up for Missouri, and now you have to worry if you're still that this could turn into the type of loss that will stay with them mentally the rest of the year. Well, they have not been a very good team on the road. Nobody has questioned that. They, I, I think they have, what, a 10-game losing streak on the road? Offside, defense, replay first down. And now you come here, you're devastated after such a great thrust in your opening game against Illinois. 
you lose some key players. We still don't know what Pedrotti's situation is, but he is a leader and he is a key member of this defense. It could be a, it could be a, a season carrying situation here. Whoa, look at that ball. McElroy bobbles it and the Tigers, if they can hang on, they can't. Boy, does that ever describe their day. Andre White, the free safety, couldn't find the handle. They were trying to give him a present and they still couldn't unwrap it. Watch this. McElroy looks like he's got it, and then he doesn't have it, then he's got it, he doesn't have it. Watch this. You think this is going to be a touchdown. And they still can't get it. First down. And it doesn't matter, they were offsides again. Anyway. Wow. Not, not even in their wildest dreams could they have had this much of a breakdown, this much of a wipeout. The pictures pretty much tell the story here. First and goal from the six. McElroy breaks the tackle and scores. Second touchdown today for McElroy. He shook off the linebacker 46, John Safely, who was the only Tiger who had a shot at preventing the latest Aggie score. Now and Atulius, good again. Watch it one more time. In this situation, boy, you want to be able to make this play and safely has a shot, and he knows that if he doesn't get him right there, it is all over. McElroy knows it too, and everybody here in Aggieland knows it. He certainly was in a position to make a play and failed to do it. Watch the run through by 46. He has the arms around him, and for just the power and strength of those legs, he is not able to wrap him up, and McElroy just takes it in the end zone. Now it looks like he wants to do an interview with us. He's welcome to join us. <laughs> <laughs> well, in case you're wondering, the all-time in and scoring record is not yet in jeopardy. 110 points against Daniel Baker in 1920. Haven't heard much from Daniel in. He's tired. <laughs> he never recovered. <laughs> Then he was never heard from again. <laughs> from Kyle Field on Raycom and Prime Network, Dave Barnett, Giff Nielsen, 3-0-3 still to go in the third quarter of a 59 to nothing. A&M runaway. They don't normally lead games early here. Most of the Aggie fans know you for staying for every last minute. But even some of them, I think, are starting to reconsider that. Great day kicking off by Terry Venetulius. And again, Tigers start from their 20. And we're wondering at what point Handy will get the rest of the afternoon off. It might be right now with the final now in from Alabama and the number two tide wiping out the previously undefeated Arkansas Razorbacks. First loss in the Danny Ford era at Arkansas. New quarterback, number 16, Brandon Corso, redshirt freshman for Fairfax, Virginia. Good touch, good reader of defenses. He was very highly rated as a high school senior, but he broke his finger after coming in as one of the top 20 quarterbacks in the nation in some rating. That is Ryan Lyons who gets the give from Corso. Lyons, like Corso, uh, perhaps lost some schools on his recruitment list because of an injury late in his high school career, but Corso Groom to take over in a couple of years for Handy. Held the Virginia completion record for high school quarterbacks at Fairfax. And Ryan Lyons from Arlington Lamar had a very similar story. He set out 90 and 91 because of a knee problem. 2,300 yards though and 22 touchdowns as a senior. 
And early in his college career, injuries basically wiped out his uh, first couple of years. Carries again and has the Tiger first down. Yeah, I think we need to clear something up. Brandon Corso is not related to Lee Corso, who Aggie fans absolutely love. <laughs> Their biggest booster last year. <laughs> so Jeff Handy, if we assume that he is done for the day, and he should be, finishes 10 of 22 for 93 yards. himself. Let's just get through this game. He's not even through the third quarter quite yet. Lions. Couple of yards. That's a swarming Aggie defense right there. And, and of course, this is a great opportunity for Lions and Corso to get a little time in. Lions, uh, of course, doing some nice jobs with running. And Bob Davies said, I don't care if it's 59 to nothing. Would you guys get out there and not miss any tackles? And that last play, Lions danced through the hole a little bit, got hit a few times, spun, got some extra yards. And Bob Davies says, hey, we're not giving away a thing. Defensive starters are still in. Corso with the play clock. Firing just as he gets the snap, is buried, drops it, and the Aggies have it again. Steve Soleri for the second time. The Corso was back, and he was trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage and when you're in this situation and you know they're coming you cannot hold the football you have got to let it fly and he didn't he tried to throw it then he brought it down lost control of it and Soleri was there to recover this is a growing experience for this young man playing against an excellent football team Preston still the quarterback McElroy still the tailback for about eight or nine near the 20. And this behind second team blocker is all the way across now for AM offensively. Complete substitution in that offensive line. And how would you like to just have McElroy back there to run the clock out for you? Obviously, that's not what the Aggies want to do, but what a fine football player he is. Detron Smith through the line inside the five, first and goal. Detron Smith, they compare in some ways to Robert Wilson, who's one of the best fullbacks ever to play here at AM. and Built alike, six foot, 200. Second strongest man on the team. Boy, nice job by the offensive line. Absolutely perfect job opening up that big hole. And Detron Smith just about scored. Looked like he was going to just for a minute with his momentum. Knocked off his feet. Smith, his senior year at Lake Highlands, averaged 10 10 Damn, that's, that's two years worth for a lot of guys. First and goal, four-yard line. McElroy. That's too easy. Another one. That's too easy. <laughs> Tremendous incentive plan here at Aggieland. <laughs> Where are you going to have more fun on campus? Can you imagine that? Let's go to the football game and make out. Well, Missouri's coming in. 1990, in the Holiday Bowl, the Aggies under Bucky Richardson hit BYU. That's Brigham Young University for 65 points. They have just stuck 66 on the tight. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, that was BYU. Yeah, I was there yeah. to see that. Yeah. I looked over there and I wanted to kiss my wife and she slapped me. Another outstanding effort on the part of McElroy. 
So now the question becomes, will we see at any point in the fourth quarter 11 guys all wearing number 12 on the field for a <laughs> I, I don't know, but if you're Bob Stoll, this is one point I think as a coach you want to just say, can it be over? Can we just pull the team off and just go get on our bus and go back home and not worry about another thing? He's got 15 minutes and four seconds still to go. Yeah, those guys I would I would consider setting college football on its ear by playing 11 number 12. Hey, listen, I really apologize for not knowing all these guys on that one kickoff, but there they all are, number 12, and here's McElroy, their teammate. They kind of take turns going in. The famous 12th man here at Texas a and University. Ben Atilius blasting another one, seven yards deep. This is the most points the Tigers have allowed since 1990 when they lost 69-21 to Nebraska. And if you're keeping count, by the way, seven kicks now that Ben Atulius has uh, kicked for touchback. No return, seven times. You got to have some mixed emotions here if you're Brandon Corso, don't you? You'd like to play, but on the other hand, man, you're going into the, the, the teeth of a tiger here, and it's not your tiger. Yeah, you're really, yeah, you're exactly right. Ah, it, it is just a, uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one to accept. Wow, number 22 Boston College upset. By the erstwhile Mildcats at Northwestern by one. That is at last the end of the third quarter. Here in College Station, 66 to nothing, Texas A&M. You know, all my life I've worked with the best. So when I needed a new truck, I just naturally went to Mack Hike Ford. I met all the folks at Mack Hike Ford. The body shop, the park department, and the service drive. They got the best Ford team in Texas. And when they explained their price protection guarantee, heck, I knew I was going to get the best price, too. You don't have to be Bum Phillips to get the best of Mack High Ford. You just have to tell them Bum sent you. I'm a Will Watcher. I'm a Will Watcher. He knew his America's game. Need some cash? Oh, yeah. I'm a Will Watcher. I'm a Will Watcher. You got it. Everybody plays. Wheel of Fortune, Saturday night at 6.30 on Channel 11. It's the cry for independence, the beginning of a fight for freedom. In 1810, freedom rang in the small town of Dolores Hidalgo. And now, more than 180 years later, 11 News takes you back to celebrate the true story of one man's fight to save a nation. I'm Sylvan Rodriguez. Join me for a fascinating special saluting Mexico's Day of Independence. Watch a special rebroadcast of El Grito, the celebration of a people, Sunday at 4 on Channel 11, the spirit of Texas. Fourth quarter begins 66 to nothing, so uh, we here at Raycom feel it is it's high time to delve into the Gifford Nielsen <laughs> store of Bum Phillips stories, okay? Yeah. Start thinking, get, get him lined up. Yeah, there was oh, Bum, yeah, he was sitting right there. He would be awfully proud of this Texas A&M defense uh, today. They have just been outstanding. They have been making the big plays. That's what Bob Davey wanted them to do. Tony Holly with a drop on first down, on the second down to begin the fourth quarter. He was the guy that the Aggies worried about coming in. He's one of the top receivers in school history. Came in with 99 in his career. He needed four catches to go to number two all time, and that would have been his fourth. 
Irish trail that one early, but now sailing over Michigan State. Well, one question yet to be answered. Bobbled and caught by Washington, but not nearly enough for the first down. The worst defeat in Missouri history was 77 to nothing against Oklahoma in 1986. And AM is 11 points away from equaling that margin. Ray Mickens now. They gave, I believe, Aaron Glenn the afternoon off as far as returning punts. The day he had doing that. 75 yard touchdown in the midst of this Aggie onslaught. Low, but it's going to get a Missouri roll and it's looking from the 23. Flag is down as he heads out of bounds after a 10 yard return. Easy comp on hand. <laughs> All Americans here in, in a very small recruiting class. Originally they had eight, and they've lost one since then. But of seven recruits in 1993, the fish class, as the freshmen are called here at AM. Look at the All Americans. Maresh Ruman Mitchell, who was the only non Texan on the roster. He's from Abbeville, Louisiana. Five of the seven high school All Americans. Buck in the back, above the waist, on the return, the 10-yard penalty. So the Aggies take over from their 23-yard line when we return to Kyle Field. Wouldn't it be great if your neighbor was Wally Dallenbach, the Keystone Beer Winston Cup driver? Wally, great car. Want to take a for a spin, Dave? A spin? And keep her under 170, Dave. One. 70. See Wally Dallenbach, or possibly his neighbor Dave, race the Keystone Beer stock car in the Winston Cup Series. Well, how'd you drive, Dave? Well, she drifts a little in three. No problem. But we need to bleed the brakes. It's Wouldn't that be there. great? It's chasing after something you may never catch. It's hit or miss. And some days it's more miss. It's disappointing, it's dangerous, it's never, ever boring. In other words, it's exactly like a cowboy's life. At Wrangler, we know cowboys. Our genes were invented by them. Wrangler, the Western original. For quick response. For smooth acceleration, turning loose. For a cleaner engine, turn him loose. Move up to 93 octane Exxon Supreme and turn the tiger loose. The Southwest Airlines storyline looks this way with a 66 nothing Aggie lead over the Tigers. Jeff Handy, not non-factor today. Really a shock for a very talented quarterback. And Pulig returning day of his short career with one of the best ever. 15 for 22 through the air. Couple of scores. Touchdowns a plenty by Thomas and McElroy. Having a numbing effect on some still in attendance. Please to get two cadets on both sides of it, huh? A waker up. Yeah. McElroy. And a nice cutback. What a great decision by Leland McElroy for big yardage. 21 to be exact. Boy, what a move McElroy put on there. Going around the left side, and you can see the talent in this young man. Watch him as he stops on a dime, comes back to the right side. Look at this. It's like a little hurdle right over the top. You missed. He takes it all the way down. 44-yard line, and that was just beautiful. You know, we got a we got a Missouri player that is injured on the sideline. But you know, talking to RC yesterday, it was really interesting because you've got you, you had a situation where you had Greg Hill here. Well, he goes and recruits Rodney Thomas, and he says to Rodney Thomas, "Yeah, we got a great player in Greg Hill, but I want to challenge you to beat him out." 
So Rodney Thomas comes, and all of a sudden they have Greg Hill and Rodney Thomas. Then he goes to McElroy, and he said, hey, listen, I got to tell you something. We got Greg Hill here. We got Rodney Thomas here. I want to challenge you to beat them out. And all of a sudden they got unbelievable running backs, and they've got that much depth. The injured Tiger is Bo Adams. Backup free safety from Jefferson City, Missouri. Slocum says he thinks all the great guys, uh, the, the real talents in college football are like that. They're not put off by the fact that you may be stacked pretty well at a position. He says that even, even back when Aaron Lewis was here, other schools would tell Greg Hill, well, if you go to A&M, you're behind Lewis. And they told Thomas, if you go to A&M, you're behind Hill. It, it hasn't had any effect on them because they are... Uh, people who respond to the idea of mixing in among other good talents at the same position. And I have to agree with him there. I think players look at a situation and say, how can I make a contribution? There are a small faction of players that want to be the story. Here at Texas A&M, what R.C. Slocum has preached to this team as he is enjoying himself on the sidelines, unlike Bob Stahl, is, hey, come and be a part of this tradition. We have got it rocking and rolling here in Aggieland. You can be a major part of it. Just believe me, just trust me. Come and be a part of it. And these players have responded and said, yeah, we want to be there. How many programs recruit from such a small geographic area? Three hours radius. I think almost the entire team is within two or three hours of the drive home. Etron Smith. Two or three yards. We shot only one recruit from outside of Texas, and he's from Louisiana. And almost everybody else is from the Dallas area or Houston area or Central Texas. Syracuse with an early score in Austin. Interesting possibilities brew in that game. Syracuse has never lost. They're 2 29 and 0 when they've scored 29 or more points. Texas has never lost at Memorial Stadium when they've scored 25 or more. So you figure something's got to give there. McElroy again shows good uh, cutback tendencies. Didn't just blindly head for the left corner. He kept his eyes up and looked for an alley to cut back, and he got two or three extra yards, perhaps, and brings up third and six. I think he got a little uh, pinch on that uh, on that hand as he came back to the inside. This is a great opportunity right now for some of the backup players that don't normally get some experience to play a little bit. They work hard in practice. They give pictures to the first-team offense. Now they're having a chance to play a little bit. It's a lot of fun for them. Preston under pressure is incomplete. The intended target was Clay, who's made a couple of catches today. Preston knew he had something. He had Clay coming all the way across the field. Big smile on his face said, oh, if I would have just put that ball out in front of you, we would have had a big, big play. Threw it behind him just a bit. James Bennett has not had to work much today. No, he has not. Best punt of the afternoon, though. And Clayton Baker just made a true freshman mistake. Muffing that one when he should have turned and run as far as he could away from that thing. Before you take another full-size pickup out for a spin, remember... Not one of them offers four-wheel anti-lock brakes. That's about to change. It would appear truck designers have never enjoyed spending much time on the seats. And, it seems, neither have truck owners. That's about to change. Why Farm Bureau Insurance? The rates are competitive and help me get great coverage for my money. When you have a claim, Farm Bureau service is fair and fast. Our agent put together a plan to help save for their future. Helping you is what we do best. That's why people across America, from every walk of life, depend on Farm Bureau insurance. Americans like you. For auto, home, and life, call your local Farm Bureau today. 
It's where the careers of naval officers are launched and where pleasure boaters come to cast away from it all. But Annapolis, Maryland is also a major financial center because it's served by Nations Bank, which enables coastal properties to call on a depth of experience in financing, offers the overstreets everything from equity loans to mutual funds, and gives people a bank that puts greater financial power at their command. In Annapolis and in 1,900 other communities throughout our nation. That is not a typo. It is indeed 66 to nothing, Texas A&M. As Missouri takes over from their 20. Lucky, in fact, that uh, it's not 68 to nothing. As Clayton Baker was bailed out. Corso is still the quarterback. And the Aggie defense is still hungry. Some second teamers starting to be mixed in as Brian Murray, the third team fullback, brought down by 96, Brandon Mitchell. They allowed him to play. Brandon Mitchell. Isn't he the only player on this team? He's, he's the Louisiana. From yeah, yeah, he's from Abbeville. Boy, he's having fun, though. Look at his field position. This is what Missouri has been facing. Best starting position. Wow, they're on 28. All dead. Four short of Frank Jones, who goes straight back. Donovan Greer, true freshman from A. Leaf Elsick, one of two true freshmen who were listed in the two deep this, this week for AM. Played quite a bit last week at Oklahoma, but had a pulled rib cage muscle bothering him this week. When Mickens went out last week against Oklahoma, it was this young man that came in and really played well. The coaching staff really excited about what this young man's career will turn out like because he has a wealth of talent. Corso, good block to keep the blitz off his back, but he's incomplete. Intended for Raphael Tiger Boy, number 23. You know, Corso went back there, and I'm looking down the field trying to find any kind of a crease to throw the ball into. The Aggies defensed it perfectly. They had the flat route covered. They had the hook covered. Corso really didn't have a chance, but he was getting a great deal of pressure. When you remember back to the first offensive series of the day by Missouri, they looked like they would uh, match it in yard for yard and point for point today. Nickett, right backward. 44 yard kick and a return of minus three. spotting the state bird of Texas, just look for an unusually large wingspan and very distinctive coloring. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. Texas is such a big state that to really succeed in business, you'd have to give every business person a company plane. So that's what we did. Southwest Airlines, it's like having your own company plane. At La Quinta Inns, our most frequent guests are traveling salesmen. So we asked a few how they'd sell La Quinta. You look like a person on the go, am I right? You're a VIP kind of guy, am I right? You don't have time for some fancy smancy breakfast, am I right? At La Quinta, they've customized a free continental breakfast for busy guys like yourself. In fact, this blueberry muffin was baked with you in mind. La Quinta, you're not staying at a hotel, you're staying with us. Last week, the Sparks were flying at the Post Oak Ranch as Buddy Ryan was taking some heat from an Oiler fan. What's in store this week? Join Buddy and me Saturday, brought to you by the Houston area Chevy First Team dealers. Dave Farnett, Giff Nielsen, our producer David Handler, director Johnny Tyus. And we head to Waco next week, our Exxon Raycom Game of the Week Tech and Baylor. And we will welcome Grant Taft to the booth as we begin our Southwest Conference head-to-head -head portion of the schedule. We look forward to that. 
457 total yards by the Aggie offense today. They would have more, I think, if the defense hadn't set them up in such short-range scoring position with all those takeaways in the first half. And Preston remains the quarterback here with 10.33 to go in the game. Michael Roy out of the backfield. Smith picks up the fumbled snap, and he turns that into about a three-yard game. That's how the day has gone. Every, everything has gone the Aggies' way. Remember back, I, I believe, who was it? Was it Rodney Thomas that dropped the ball and it came right back up into his hands? Detron Smith, watch this. Preston doesn't get the ball cleanly. And watch it one more time as he comes around the right side. Smith with a punishing run, in fact, knocked the helmet right off that defensive player. Joe Love lost his hat. McElroy, big hole, turns it outside with a block from Smith and has a first down to the 47-yard line. Detron Smith showing that blocking ability to give McElroy some extra room. Look at these numbers. This is from... Oh, <laughs> this is incredible. This is from your backup running back right there. 14 rushes, 119 yards, three touchdowns. I mean, I don't know if they have a backup system here. They just all put them in there and say, whether you're the second, the first stringer, the third stringer, just go out there and run the football. It's incredible. Well, one thing you know he'll point out for the man that he backs up this week, other night's nice first down run, is that he has outgained the starter. He's outgained Rodney Thomas, who finished at 107 yards and three touchdowns. He is so elusive. You know, we talk about the different styles of runners that the Aggies have. We talked about Greg Hill, and of course, he's serving that suspension. We talk about Rodney Thomas, who is a guy that just takes the football and just tries to run over you. And he is very effective of picking a hole and just going after it. McElroy kind of sets things up a little bit, a little bit more fluid in his running style. I'm not saying... I'm not saying one is better than the other, but it's just the style of the way they run. Rodney Thomas likes to take the football and just pound, and he is excellent at it. Movement that time by the left guard, Red John ball. Richard. Ball start. Offense. Still first down. McElroy style, much closer to Greg Hill style. Yeah, I would say that. But does that cause problems for defense, almost like... If a pitcher, a fastball pitcher, is relieved by a curveball pitcher, you have one rhythm, and then you have to adjust and get a whole different rhythm. Oh, there was a tremendous hit right there inside. You know, you look at that, you look at that, and I'm not sure it does, because as a defense, what you're trying to do is you're just trying to tackle the running back, no matter where that running back is. Well, Greg Hill says, I don't care if you're standing there or not, I'm going to go right through you and make it, uh, make some big yardage. On the other hand, McElroy, and we saw it happen a couple of plays ago where he comes inside, bounces to the outside, comes back inside, back to the outside. A lot like Greg Hill, like you mentioned, Dave. McElroy unable to get the corner turn this time. But he's up near the 40-yard line, and the clock is down inside eight and a half minutes. You know, I'm really impressed with the balance of these running backs. They get hit and they spin and just keep on moving. And I talked about their legs, just looking at them yesterday. They have got such powerful legs. They are built so low to the ground that they can spin. They can stay on their feet. And we've seen it time and time again today where they've been hit, they've spun, they put an arm down at additional yardage. On the draw, down to the 38. New fullback, by the way, is Shane Anthony. Number 25. And that brings up a fourth and about four. And you can maybe hear the crowd urging the Aggies to go for it. But they've already passed up one opportunity to add points. They could have kicked the field goal. They took a delay penalty and punted. And we'll see what they have in mind here. Preston heads to the sideline for a conference with R.C. Slocum. Well, that's exactly what they're going to do here. R.C. was on the sideline saying, wait a second, you know, just sit out there for a few minutes, let's let this clock run out, and then we're going to punt the football. Well, how does he pick up the pieces? What in the world can Bob Stoll say to his team this week? This is going to be the toughest coaching challenge that he has faced since he's been at the University of Missouri because he really felt like he had turned the corner, and he had his players believing that he had turned the corner. 
Now he's got to reload, and once again, we don't know what happened to Pedrotti on defense. He was injured. He was taken off on a stretcher. He is kind of an anchor on that defensive uh, team. He, he's got a tough, tough road to hoe in trying to sell his defensive team and his whole football team that everything's going to be okay and that they can bounce back from this. Tigers went for the block, and Bennett wobbles one that gets a nice bounce down inside the 10. And Missouri, all afternoon long, has had miserable field position. The punt went 33. 